Welcome to Casey Kasem's Top 100 in 5, 4, 3, 2. No, you don't say those out loud. You don't say the last two. <laughs> no. And then you do all the hand gestures for go. I remember learning that I took a class in college. A production class? Yeah, and you did like wrap it up. That's when you take out the big giant cane. <laughs> and pull them off stage. I forget all of them, but I remember you do like five, four, three. Welcome Over to another you. episode of Opinions That Don't Matter. I'm Sean. And I'm Katie. And we've made it to 101. Is this 101? Wrap it up. That's it for the podcast. Wrap it up. This is all our final broadcast. We'll have instruction. Oh. Sean still doesn't remember to put his phone on silent and he gets like 5,000 Oh, it happens all the notifications. time. It does happen quite frequently. I don't know. It's a tough case. <clears throat> Sometimes they make the phone case so t- tough and, and boxy that you can't touch the buttons. That's I don't what like I was that. like. I had to like try to reach Dig in. Dig in to get the... Anyways. It's too much. It's too much. Here we are. We're back. Do it's we want to start off with uh, puppy parlance or dream diaries? Oh, you, well, I'll, <laughs> I'll follow you wherever you go. Okay. People like the puppy parlance, so we'll lead with what we know works. This is more like poopy parlance. Oh, before we say that, <laughs> mm-hmm. congratulations to Team Canada, the women's hockey, and Team USA. Women's hockey is actually fun to watch because they don't just beat the shit out of each other. It's a very I skilled like, sport, wow. and those women are amazing. They're snipers. Yeah, yeah they're really good. Yeah, uh, but uh, last night as I was watching, uh, I think the game ended around 1. Uh, yeah, I was too tired. I fell. I went to bed at like eleven thirty. Canada took gold. The United States put mm-hmm. up a hell of a third period. I thought they were going to come back, but I didn't think we would. When I went to bed, it was three to zero, and I was like, "I think you Canada's going to take it." Yeah, I was like, "Good night." As I was watching the game, as I've been doing all day, I'd been feeding Roxy little treats because uh, I've been learning. You know, she has to well, be rewarded. Well, she's in training, so when she comes back to us, like to check in with us, whether we're out, it's actually supposed to be outside, not in the house, but Sean does it all the time. So if she comes in to check in with you, then you give her a treat, like reward her for coming to you because you want her to associate you with good things so that when you ask her to come, she comes. That's right, the idea. Right. So Sean's been giving her treats all the time and he always has treats in his pockets and stuff. He's like a grandpa with Werther's original. You know what my secret is? Bacon. Bacon. Um. Anyway, that's not true. I'm not feeding her bacon, but no, that's from as good as it gets. The movie Verdell. Verdell. Has anyone seen Verdell? <laughs> I met that guy, that actor. He's amazing. He was so kind. We I met him randomly. So my friend Ali Diggs and I went to Coachella together, and the morning of the last day of show, so it's like a three day three day tour. Right. Anyway, it's a three day event, and the morning of the last day. We were out to breakfast at this little diner near, we were staying in Cathedral City. Um, Anyway, we ran into him and his wife and his like two kids and one of his daughters brought a friend. Anyway, they all had bracelets just like we had bracelets, but they had a fancy bracelet. They were VIP. What color was the bracelet? I don't even remember. I just said VIP on the little uh, tag thing. the, The What's the, they called the, when you beep through things, like we have them for our mammoth passes. A certain kind QR of code QR. or a scanner or no, it's uh, not a QR code. RF it's code, RF, RF signal. No, it's RFID. RFID. RFIDs. Yes. So, anyways, they that's what they use these days, and they had fancy ones. And I don't know if Allie or I started up a conversation, or one of them, but either way, we were like, "Good show last night, huh?" And yeah, you know, because you clearly all have the bracelets, blah blah blah. And then he was like, "Yeah, I'm bummed. We're we're gonna have to head back." I got called in for work stuff and blah 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 and i recognized him like i was like oh he's been in a lot of things he's an actor of you know you're trying to place him i was like not that one not that one um anyway he was like let me see if i can get it off of my wrist because i tried to make them not put it on too tight and i'll try to give you my vip pass because we're not even gonna use them today and ali and i were like jackpot and they all really tried and tried and no one could get theirs off it was the effort though yeah it was really nice and he was like i'll see he, he like texted somebody. He's like, I'll see if I can uh, hook you guys up since we're not using them. And no, they didn't get back to him. But he was like, sorry, nothing panned out. We're like, N- we weren't, we were just having breakfast. That was it. So very nice, super friendly. He asked like, where are you guys from? And we're like, oh, I'm in Santa Monica. Oh, she was like, I'm in, I forget where Allie lived at the time, but um, I think she was just like in West LA. Right. But anyway, it was, he was very, very nice. Never underestimate the act of kindness, even if it's from a celebrity in Hollywood. Well, people, I, I think, 
Some people can be real dickwads. Yeah. But most people, I find, if you give them the benefit of the doubt, are very sweet. Nice. So, anyway. You know what's funny about those bracelets is mm-hmm. that even if you have the VIP bracelet, mm-hmm. you're going to bump into somebody with the VVIP. Oh, the extras. And then always. there's the VVVIP. And well, then there's the platinum status. I mean, that's not true. So... If you're, at a, if you're at a Barrow Star, that is true. You think you're at the top and you run into someone who has a different type of bracelet. Right. And, you and realize, then you're like, what do they have the access to? And then you find out it's it's an even better restaurant or it's it's not a porta potty. It's a, <laughs> not you know, a porta potty. It's a beautiful you bathroom. You don't have bugs in your room. <laughs> right. Exactly. And and uh, so but eventually, more, though, you get to the top of the ladder, right? And you get a, you've got like six bracelets like on. Say, it's, the major, it's the number of bracelets, not necessarily the color of one. So if you have the VIP pass. Yeah, but you don't cross platinum with bronze, right? Like you, you, you have two platinums, that's worth more. You get into even better places. No. You get jet skis at the resort with those. No. So what you're talking about. Is, Three platinum bands and you get jet skis. Sean goes off a lot of, a of places by himself with all these bands. And parasailing. Four <laughs> platinum bands and boy, oh boy, there's just you in the club. You've surpassed everyone. Why would you want to be alone? That sounds so dorky it and sounds like terrible. a perfect vacation. All it takes is four platinum bands. That, so what I was going to say mm. is that that's not what happens at all. But That's if you, how you get to if heaven. You get... If you have five, five platinum bands. I read it in the Book of Mormon. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. Yes. And no offense to my Mormons, just making a joke. Where are my Mormons at? Yeah. So anyways, when we would go to VidCon, we've kind of worked our way up the ranks. I mean, VidCon, does it exist anymore? They say it does. It's yet to be seen. I think it's just Viacom now. It's no longer VidCom. It's Viacom. (laughs) It's VidCon still. By Viacom. Anyway, I know they own it. They don't say shit about it, Sean. You're making up things that aren't true. Oh. (laughs) Please just hold for a second. Okay. He's got a lot of opinions this morning. So anyway, when we used to go to VidCon, we would buy our own tickets. Like we'd buy our passes and we, you know, saw it as like a business expense. And also we were just like building our brand and trying to figure out what this was. And we thought it was a great place to be. And it it was, it is a great place to be. And then we got invited. And then it's funny because once you get invited as a featured creator, then you get like the VIP, essentially the VIP band. And you have access to like the the green rooms and the behind the scenes. Then you get to see how the sausage is made. Yes. But then we learn quickly that you have to get bands for different parties and only the cool kids get invited to all the parties. And it took us a while to figure out who we needed to know to get invited to all those parties. And then there was another step where it was like, who do we need to know to allow Sean into the party? Because they'd be like, you can go, but you can't bring a plus one. Then there's like, oh, who do you know who... Yeah, and they'll be able to provide you with better transportation rather than group or transportation. Or free drinks. Right. Or it's always so, like, th- this is a. So you have just a shitload like, of bracelets. Just like real life, though. It's the same thing. It's, it is. It's, it's, it's always your about network. who you know in your network. Yeah. Right, right. So, uh, but then once you collect all the bracelets and you're just exhausted from all the work of like getting to you know the one, bracelets, that, that you, you don't even want to use them. You promptly take a nap. Yeah, you're like, no. Oh. <laughs> And I don't miss want. All Does anyone events. want this bracelet? Get it uh, off me! Hang it up. I, the <laughs> and then you see this young bracelet. people, and you're like, "I can give you this bracelet. I can uh-huh. give you no advice in life, but yeah. collect as many." Well, That's, because I go to bed at like ten o'clock, so I'm like, "Here, just let me fold my thumb in real tight, and I'll get this off." And you party till two in the morning, right. collect- and I'll see you at our panel at ten. They never show up. No. <laughs> okay. Anyways, back to poopy parlance because oh, yeah. we got way off topic. So. Roxy is a pupper and she doesn't, I have to be honest, she's a good dog. She'd barely, I mean, knock on wood. She hasn't really chewed anything in our home, like no. ruined anything. She chewed a little bit of one of my Uggs, but it, all it was to, was to rip the tag out and Destroyed get it. Destroyed a pair of Crocs yeah. of mine, but who cares? They're Not Crocs. Not Crocs, they were your Birkenstocks. No, they were Crocs. Birkenstocks. You, you Crocs. don't own any. They were, he doesn't own any Crocs. It's because I purchased everything but for they're, him. There's they're Birkenstock. outdoor Birkenstocks that you can hose off with water that or like yeah it's like a injection foam material. or something croc ask yeah. croc like anyway so she they're like 40 bucks or something so that's all she's destroyed really that's it getting off so lucky oh that's a lie part of our uh system to water the plants are she also chewed up one of my uh platinum bracelets i didn't like that <laughs> After. Get it off of me, Roxy. Chew it. <laughs> do it. No, but she chewed up her sprinkler system a little bit. Yeah. But that's about it. Sprinkler so, heads are like 10 bucks. A piece, I know. So it's I'm not surprised bad. how cheap they were, to be honest. But anyway, so she hasn't really done anything bad. 
when it comes to that. But she does eat everything outside, like leaves, other bark. Like I've legitimately picked up like poop of hers. It's just tree, bits of tree. There's no poop. It's just tree in a poop form. I mean, I don't know how you'd be able to break it down even further. Like you can't really squeeze it into a tighter form. It's a branch. <laughs> it's back into a branch form. Right. She took it out from a branch and put it back into a branch. How do you turn five branches into a log? Give it you to your ask. dog. <laughs> 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 but, um, well, that was good. Anyway, I don't know what she got into yesterday, but she got sick and not the throw up kind, the poopy kind. And right. so when I was up, I took her out and she had a normal poops. And I told Sean, I said, she tried to poop it's twice. too much poo talk. Sean gets overwhelmed immediately. Well, it's just all the time. Who? Oh, yeah, it's all the time. Like, just because from last night, that's all the time. <laughs> anyway, she went to the bathroom and I was like, okay. I was like, she went poop twice. So, and she acted like she needed to go out again later. Like, she was like, oh, I got to go out like quick, which is not like her. I was like, oh, keep an eye on it, Sean, or whatever. And, and then I took, we took her out a couple more times. She was fine went pee fine and then i went to bed and i guess i don't know did she get into her crate so you shut her in there or why'd she get in yeah she went to her crate and it means it's bedtime she does that sometimes you the just hockey, shut the door hockey game was winding down in the final minutes and uh, there was a couple of amazing rushes you know so this is again team usa and team canada gold medal mm -hmm. the usa uh the u.s women did not pull it out but i thought they were going to possibly yes. it was looking pretty interesting so sean stayed up and right at the, her as the game winds down to zero we hear <laughs> and she, she blew it out and she pooped <laughs> <laughs> and it was a river i, of, I was asleep a river of, uh, of dookie but i didn't know what happened exactly because <laughs> the buzzer was going and the announcer's going and everyone's celebrating and i'm watching and then i got a distinct waft <laughs> and i was like oh Oh, Somebody no. is really protesting this game. I opened the cage and there she was. She looked really sad. She always looks sad. Her ears are always pulled back. But like, she didn't step in it. Thank God. And she wasn't, you know, barking. So that was good. I brought her to the cage and it took about an hour to, to do cleanup. But I think I did a pretty good job. I think you did a wonderful job. I checked it today and I just wiped down the crate a little more with like some yeah. wipes and the ground. There was just a little bit on the carpet. Yeah, but it was I missed fine. that part. But. It's because it was under. So we have a crate. She's crate trained. And so the crate has this like plastic bin kind of that her bed sits in so that if there is an accident or anything, it just hangs into that plastic bin. But, Which, this, but the walls are still crate. Good so. design though. I, I yeah. It really did hold that river of dung. I wish that they had... Rivers of dawn. <laughs> I wish they had floating away. <laughs> Don't let it hit the carpet, <laughs> even though it's spray. <laughs> A CD coming out soon. Um, no feet. Uh, <laughs> cassette. Um, Don't feed her too many treats today. Well, now she has school today, and it's funny because I feel like she's like a kid. Where I'm like, hope she's okay at school. <laughs> it's like, sleep. excuse me. Yeah. You know, but. We gave her a little bit of food, which we're not supposed to do in the morning, but I gave her one of those like beef uh, dinner dinner patties, they're called. So I was like, at least then she'll have something in her stomach if something upset her. Yeah. Um, but I don't know what she got into. Well, here's, I'm, I'm observing her environment pretty closely. Mm -hmm. Now we have a fountain in the back and sometimes I don't run the fountain because uh, leaves are dropping. From, yeah, I just ordered us that thing to clean it out, by the way. Yes, a fishnet. So I think the water not, was not the stockings, the scooper. I think that <laughs> Roxy is now wearing fishnet stockings, hanging out by the fountain. She's very franche, smoking a cigarette. Yeah, she right. tends <laughs> uh, in a beret. Okay, mm -hmm. um, she's like le woof, le woof. <laughs> okay, uh, I think she's drinking fountain water more than she should because she yeah. stands up and and like puts her front paws on. I'll put a photo up here. I think I have yeah. some, and she dips her head in the fountain and she drinks it, but it's it's standing water, right? And, and also, so bird and squirrel poo, I think is maybe in there and leaves and you know, whatever bacteria in the sun. Well, you know. we put those, they're supposed to be pet friendly, but they're supposed to stop uh, mosquitoes, the pucks, the mosquito puck Yes, things. mosquito dunks. And it says it's safe for pets, but I wonder if that's causing it too. Yeah, uh, just cause it doesn't really- Kill them doesn't mean it doesn't make yeah. their tummy upset. So anyways, there's that. And uh, also when it's windy out, 
branches fall over the oak trees and the branches are covered in this really yeah like a moss and a moldy weird heavy duty moss thing. yeah i don't know what and she eats that stuff too so i suspect it was just like a rich day of moss and uh and fetid fountain water i know but she's a dog they have pretty strong constitution yep and she just uh you know i mean she's fine now totally but, fine but her it's tail's like, wagging and i know but i was like oh the yeah. dookie not the dookie well, anyways last I'm time sure. that happened i had to clean it well no i had to we got back from dinner and i don't know what happened remember it's like explosion only two explosions in uh, mm -hmm. nine months that's pretty good but that one she had stepped in and so i i like i was like sean take us outside take us outside so we got her outside you hosed her off and then i had to like follow her footprints of dookie wow we've been talking about dookie for 17 minutes get over it Sean um, has a very difficult well, just, time. People who have kids and pets always talk about this stuff. Am really? I right? They're nodding. I see them. <laughs> Maybe I need to join a support group. No, there was this funny TikTok I saw. This is I didn't save it, so I'm sorry, guys. I can't share it. TikTok, but you don't stop. This woman, there was like, I love when people do. It's made to be a duet where they just want. They're like, hey tell me they like want you to answer a question or show them something and this one was show me something that you spend so much time doing you never or you never thought it'd be that much of your life or something to that effect like something that you do more than you ever thought you would and this woman <laughs> had her dog and she was like she opens the door and she's like time to go potty oh that looks like a good potty good healthy potty it was just like this funny conversation with herself and her dog and i was like amen to that because the amount of time you spend trying to get them to go potty, making sure they went potty, making sure that they're they're okay, that, you know, that's not something I thought I would be doing. Right. But you do. I guess that's part of the beauty of living on a farm. If you have a dog, they just go anywhere in the field and do their thing. Yeah, I mean, Or maybe they just stay close by the house. They do. Because uh. we had all that acreage with Corny and where I grew up. And he would always just poop in our yard, like in a certain, there are like three areas, kind of yeah. like Roxy does. Well, I go in the tall grass when you got nice short grass, you know, like. Uh, well, yeah, and they don't usually, if they're half indoor, half outdoor, like Roxy is and like right. Corny was, they don't really want to be outside all the time. Right. And so he might probably poop in the field somewhere, but most of the time he's like coming out from the house. He's like, okay, ready to go back, you know, so that's just how it was. Fascinating. Fast. So that's poopy parlance for this week. But now we have dream diaries. Ah, yes. So I had something happen to me that has never happened to me, at least to my recollection. I'll set it up. My entire we, life. We went to bed at 11. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I didn't have any coffee all day. I've been off the caffeine. That's it's not true. Be a nice you're not off the evening. caffeine. You're just off coffee. Off the coffee. I was I'm like, sorry. as you drink black tea. <laughs> Iced tea's pretty good. Uh, there's caffeine in there? <gasps> oh, no. No kidding. Bleu. Last, after the last podcast, I was humming. Meow. I know, because there's a lot of caffeine in there. It was there. pretty good. So we went to sleep 11 o'clock. It was nice. I was turned down service, you know. Turned down service. There's a little turned mint on my what? pillow. Mm -hmm. We went to sleep at, what do you say? 1230. So I, I was super tired that day. What would that have been like? So today's Thursday, Monday. so it would have been Tuesday night? Monday night. Monday night? Okay. I'm going to say. So Monday night, I was really tired, and I just, we, we laid down, went to bed. I fell asleep pretty quick, like let's say in like five, ten minutes, like normal. And then I was having like a nightmare, and I don't really remember a ton of it because it was such a, because you'll hear about the weird way I woke up. So it was just such a, a chaotic wake up that i didn't like you know sometimes you get a chance to actually log it away into memory didn't get that chance but in my dream i remember i was in like this red room like all the walls were red and everything was red and i i was scared like i didn't want to be there and so i knew i had to get out like someone had put me there and i had to escape and so there was like this little crawl space at the bottom of a wall and i got down and i was like i can fit through there and so in my dream i crawled out through this like little crawl space there's no other better way to describe it and then i was free and i wake up <laughs> at 12 30 to <laughs> going through the bed i crawled through the that was my crawl space <laughs> she army crawled out the foot of the bed and got on the uh, what is that thing at the end of the bed the, the futon the bench the futon. bench sorry what the, is this what are we 20 years old not not a futon but the the bench at it's the end a very of the, nice bench at the end of the bed uh -huh. and you luckily were it's tufted or perched. i could have hurt myself perched like a bird on a wire on your haunches and you're like 
hey, Sean, I gotta get, I'm escaping. And I was like, hello? That's what not is- at all what you said happened. You yeah. told me that I said, Sean, Sean, Sean. And you were like, you woke up and then you said I was out crawling out the end of the bed onto yeah, the and bench. And you were like perched and then, on the then bench. And then you said, uh, what are you doing? And I said, I'm escaping. Well, that's pretty close to what I just explained. You perched just, like a bird. Well, you were like, you, you weren't sitting on the bench looking out you were oh, it was facing turned towards back, you facing oh, back weird. towards the bed and you were like hunkered down that's weird yeah <laughs> it's totally weird <laughs> anyway then i got up and he was like are you okay are you dreaming and i it's funny because i remember saying no but i was dreaming sometimes you talk in your sleep pretty frequently I do that sometimes you'll throw an elbow but very infrequently like you're in a mosh pit or something you like rustle. you do that sometimes too you don't yeah. talk but it's very rare but uh, this was a first. This was a first. So what I'd like to know from our audience is, do you sleepwalk? Do you sleep talk? What do you, have you ever like sat bolt upright and talked? And then you're like, wait, I'm awake, I'm asleep. There's that girl on TikTok that records her sleep talking. Yeah, I don't believe that is all real though. I think she found fame in rec- recording one and then a lot no, of them are just- I mean, I talk almost every night. It's gibberish. Yeah. There's no way you can make it up. She'll be like, oh, but the, the, the button. I don't buy it. Sean always is, says that. I'm suspect that. of everything. Who cares? It's funny. <laughs> like, you know. Um, but it, listen, so if you're out there <laughs> and you have this going on, some sort of sleep disorder, I don't know if it's a disorder, but. Uh, Not really, unless it like impairs things. Right in your story. My cousin Chrissy, PJ's sister, uh-huh. used to sleepwalk. And Does they she fa- still? I don't know. I don't mm-hmm. talk to her that often. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know. We'll have to ask her. Not wait. since she slept, walk away. She was gone. And, <laughs> no, Out into the street. Bye, Chrissy. <laughs> well, she used to do that. She used to get up in the middle of the night oh, and leave scary. the house. And she'd go down the boulevard. And it was a busy boulevard. That's, you know. They should have done what my, so one of my friends, Tiffany, her dad used to sleepwalk. But they didn't know that he was, he would actually sleep eat. So he'd sleepwalk and sleep eat. And the way they found out is because he's kept gaining weight and we couldn't understand why. And he thought maybe he had a thyroid problem, went to the doctor, all this stuff. And so the doctor was like, well, you know, try to, they hooked him up with a dietician. He had a meal plan and it still wasn't getting better and he kept gaining weight. And then her mom had mentioned to Tiffany, like, hey, um, slow down on your cereal eating. You know how much sugar is in that? You're supposed to be eating, you know, blah, blah, blah. And she was like, I haven't eaten any of that cereal. Really? So things just started to be missing. And so they set up a little camera in the house and found him getting up, eating in the middle of the night. So what they did was because he's like not really awake because he had no memory, is they put little locks on top of the fridge, like on the top. So it was this little latch. It wasn't like a hardcore sure. thing, but he would have had to like know how to do it. And he had to flip this little thing and open it up. Childhood latch. Mm-hmm. And they did it on all the cupboards that had food. Mm-hmm. Guess what? He lost all the weight. So if, I don't know why, if Chrissy was getting up in the middle of the night, why didn't they put a funny lock at the top of the door? They may have. Uh, it, it's not like it went on her. for years and years, but it, I think it went on for a good period. That's until scary. They, well, I don't think they knew what was going on in the beginning. Yeah. Like, I think they found her walking around the house a couple of times. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a, true because no a one's sleeping teenager. with her. Yeah. That's right. You know, so. Like Selena, Selena Spooky Boo is her TikTok name. She sleepwalks and her husband like watches and she has gotten out of the house a couple of times. So I don't know if, why they they should have a lock on their front door too, like one of those funny locks like that. Right. We had to take a little bit of a break there. We have uh, the park across the street is being cleared of leaves. So the leaf blower, it, which is- It's very aggressive. It may be coming back around again. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. It's the joys of working out of your home. Yeah, very loud, but I think- No traffic on the way to work, but leaf blowers once a week. There was a little traffic on the way to work this morning. You know, you were in my way. Yes, <laughs> shove me say, out of my way, slowpoke. Roxy was wiggle, waggle, wiggle, oh, waggle. Still couldn't sleep out of my eye. Mm-hmm. You're like, don't drive on the road if you're not awake yet. I'm like, meep, meep. Yeah. You're in my way. But uh, no. yeah, leaf blower is gone-ish. Okay, back to my story. Sleepwalking, we should lock things on the top. I just want to wrap that up for everybody. We should put some secret locks so that our loved ones don't either run out into a busy street, escape in some way, or eat themselves into an oblivion without realizing. Nothing says I love you more than secret locks so your lover won't escape. <laughs> I know it sounds so creepy when you say that. No, way. but I know what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. The, those little safety latches so yeah. kids don't get into cupboards. And It's essentially that, but it helps adults also when they sleepwalk because yeah. you're not really awake. You know what I'd like to have in mm-hmm. our house? Mm-hmm. Uh, a fridge w- with a vault lock timer system, like something the banks would have in a movie but what? you couldn't get in until the next morning. 
So like at seven o'clock, the fridge locks up. All it can do is produce water and ice. But as long as I want tea or something. I said I oh. for myself. Like, Sometimes I also want a brownie. I had to bite a Lock it up. You're like, oh my God, we, you know, you need the safe cracker, the guy who just got out of prison. What a skill. Does that even exist or is, have we just been taught that, that? I think it exists because they still use the teeth and that's what they're listening for, right? Is the teeth to go t- t- The into, tumblers or uh-huh, into some, the... something with the key, the key spring. And the... Oh, this mm-hmm. is the Lincoln XL 5000 model. But why would you want... A fridge to lock up. I don't know if I could crack that one. Well, just the fridge would be. Why? Well, just to uh, control uh, snacking late at night. You don't even snack from the fridge. You eat crackers. Not a lot of crackers, but I mean, you know, just <laughs> the idea of it. You know what I should lock up is the seasonings, and then you'd be out of luck. <laughs> so Sean gets crackers always, like around ten thirty or so, goes in, get some crackers, but, had- but he can't just have like the tortilla chips or the crackers or whatever it is that are already seasoned. We get pre-seasoned crackers. He fills them in, put them, puts them in his bowl, fills up his bowl, takes the bowl into the kitchen, and then proceeds to put a shitload of seasonings on it. Everything from paprika to garlic and onion powder to cracked, cracked pepper. black pepper, you name it, he has done it. And then in the morning, because for some reason when Sean's up late, he doesn't put dishes in the dishwasher, he sits them next to it. There'll be a bowl filled with seasoning. I'm talking like a thick layer, just seasoning. And if he's really feeling it, he'll lick his finger and stick it in the bottom of the bowl before he goes to bed and eat that sweet, sweet seasoning. <laughs> it's good seasoning. I'm telling you I'm the secrets. master of seasoning. <laughs> he loves the season. Uh, but it's not like I could buy more seasoned chips or something. I know some of you out there are thinking, Katie, get in the barbecue and shut the fuck up. No, it's very specific. He likes to do it himself. It's true. He's very particular. True. There is a, a lack seasons. of the certain, the specific flavors that I like. Mm-hmm. That's why I like a plain chip because then you can dress it up any way you want, right? You can go, maybe I want a curry chip tonight. You know what people say to do? Is if, they say to spray them with a little spray oil and then put your seasoning on because then it holds to it. Oh, it doesn't get on the floor? Oh, yeah, or yeah. on my couch or in the carpet. Or, my couch? Yeah. Well, well, well. <laughs> well, I'm the one that vacuums it, so I'm taking ownership <laughs> over the seasonings I'll, I'll, and the uh, bits. I'll take the L for this one for sure. The seasoning gets Because I do the vacuuming yeah. in there. That tagine? Tagine? Tagine. Tangine? No, tagine. Tagine is pretty, uh, it's like a citrusy, spicy. It's what they used to put, or not used to, I'm sure they still Sprinkle do. It on but we don't corn. live in LA anymore. But yeah, they put it on the corn with the cotija cheese, the street corn, delicious LA street My corn. Goodness, I recommend. Duolingo recommend. is coming along nicely. How do you say that cheese? Cotija. Oh, huh? see. <laughs> I, uh, spoilers, knew that before. <laughs> Sorry, Duolingo. But they also put the tahine on the fruit that you can get. You can get it spicy or not spicy. Seasoned, not seasoned. Tasty. I think so. Yeah. All right. Well, I think it's time to get into the letters. Get into the letters. Let's get into the letters. Uh. Mm. Okay. We actually have a lot of letters. Yeah. So nice. we, we were all caught up last week and now we, we have new letters in. Yeah. Thank you to the people who sent them in because we would have had nothing to talk about. We're going to try and get through them fairly quick so we don't get backlogged again. I think it's fun when the letters are fresh. Yes. uh, Or more fun, funner, funner times ahead. nobody fresh as me. I'm just so fresh. Fresh My letters are just so fresh, so clean, so fresh and so clean, clean. There you have it. If someone wants to remix that Mm -hmm. into a song, Mm -hmm. this just in, uh, we found out that a short film that we didn't find out someone left a comment david redacted no but i mean this is really big they were they're nominated for an oscar for mm, short film daytime emmy a, daytime emmy and a tony <laughs> Better than an oscar. a tony oscar emmy mm-hmm. and a grammy also they were singing you missed it just no. like prince won the grammy <laughs> the oscar no but the, david that was amazing it was it was cute it made me cry a little bit i teared if you wonder what we're talking about david redacted and other members of the community. But I, I believe David, I would be correct in saying he went through a lot of our episodes and edited together that beautiful piece and then asked other people to send in some clips, which is why we heard from, you know, Jules and Kaylee and people. Right. So thank you, thank you to everyone who participated, for everyone who worked on that. Thank you, David, for making that happen. That really made my day. Yeah, it was pretty cool to see. And 
it's wild because we we've been at it for two years now. We're all, we're coming up on it's crazy episode one hundred and four will be the two year mark roughly mm-hmm. somewhere around there. Yeah, and, and you wild. Know, it is. We've learned a lot, and we've mm, learned some. that we have a wonderful community. Yes, that's what we've learned. I haven't learned anything else, really. I don't think. No, well, I don't have much to share. <laughs> There's been a few words, I'm sure, that I've learned. Maybe apoplectic. And I've learned that I don't uh, speak or read or pronounce other languages, other words from other languages, very well. Well, you're learning. This episode's been brought to you by Duolingo. The more you know, Katie, how's your Duolingo coming? Bueno. Oh. Muy bueno. What did you order yesterday in the off the menu? Oh, yes, because I'm into the restaurant component where it's called travel. Travel, travel, travel. Jeremy, I should have reached out. But it goes through things like, uh, you know, let's say, uh, yo quiero pegar la cuenta. Like, I want to pay my check. Mm -hmm. Or, uh, you know, unos, uh, what would it be? What's a suitcase? A suitcase? Maleta. Uh, and how would you say, where is my suitcase? Uh, Donde esta mi maleta. And your passport? Donde esta mi pasaporte. Okay. And where are you going with your suitcase and passport? Oh, well, then I would say, uh, un boleto a Madrid. Okay. So I need a ticket to can Madrid. I go, can I Oh, no. Can you get yo two? necesito un boleto Order a Madrid. Order two tickets. Order two tickets uh, since we're doing Un it. necesito dos boletos. For you and your husband. Para mí y mi esposa. Sí. Esposo. Sí, sí, sí. Sorry, esposo. Sí. Um, I said wife, I meant husband. Oh, well, you know. I'm, I'm learning. Esposo a Madrid. Okay. And uh, mm-hmm. what are you going to order when you get to Madrid to eat? Mm. What's the first thing you're going to order? Hamburguesa. Oh, and what would I have if I wanted uh, something that swims in the ocean? Mm, pescado. Oh, pescado. Sí, sí. <laughs> Uh, Sean's been listening to me do it because I have to like speaking to my phone. <laughs> but I catch some of the words. Yeah, I, sometimes I kinda, I'd be like, oh, what did you get there? You know. Are I'd you like, ordering fish sandwich? I'm like, sí. order me one too, please. <laughs> that would be un sandwich de pescado. Uh, oh, my nose itches. Tickle. It was it was a scratch, not a pick. That was a pick. Here? Yeah, that's a pick. Oh, it's just itchy. Yeah. Get over it. I'm over it. Anyway, so Sean's been wa- listening and watching me do my Duolingo. It's been Which, fun. It's kind of cool. Once you sign up for Duolingo, you can do Triolingo. Well, you can switch over to different languages within it. And I haven't done that yet, so I don't really know how that works. Right. But you pay, you get like two weeks free, and then it's like 70 something for the year. So to me, that's pretty reasonable when I paid how much for that French uh, Rosetta Stone, like Five hundred dollars or something crazy. I pay for an online annual course as well. Do you know this? No. What yeah. is it? It's learn to play guitar. Oh, you pay for that from Fender. Yeah. Oh, do you use it? Uh, I've really gone through it. like the the first couple of modules, maybe about twenty modules altogether. Okay, that's but pretty good. The, yeah, but it doesn't stick. I have a hard time retaining information hmm. playing off of an iPhone. I'm not sure why. You but, might need uh, a class. Everybody learns differently. Yeah. So you might need someone like there that you're hearing it and seeing it. You can ask questions and they can watch you and, you know. Yeah, like a scary old Russian lady teaching you how to play guitar. That would probably no, make me. No, I had the nicest lady at McCabe's. No, I'm saying for me, that's what I would need. Oh, that's Everyone what... learns differently. For me, I think that. <laughs> Why would you want someone scary? Well, I heard. So at Kim and Ben's wedding when mm-hmm. we were in Las Vegas, there was an interesting gentleman I was speaking to and he worked for the Department of Defense. Um, I can't say his name because I don't remember it. <laughs> I was Not like, because I don't it's a remember. Secret. <laughs> and uh, he was an interesting fellow. And we were standing uh, at that restaurant or that bar upstairs at like. Oh, yes. Outside when I was in because I was in the bridal party. So right. we were in that room and you guys were out there like getting your drinks on. You know, when you're uh, at a wedding and you don't really know anyone, but you see someone else who doesn't really know. And anyone. I had to be at the, in the wedding party. And also it was a Jewish wedding. So they can't get married until sunset. Right. So Buddy and I were talking and you worked for the Department of Defense. And I said, uh, blink once if there's aliens. Of course there's he, aliens. He blinked. And so Sean I was does like, this is everybody. interesting. As if people can't blink. No, but I said, what do yeah. you do? And he said, well, I, I spend most of my time in Russia. And I said, Russia? Who was Really, this? comrade? I'm interested. <laughs> <laughs> really, comrade? <laughs> and he do said, no, no. I'm to people like that? <laughs> I'm on the other side. I said, oh, oh, yeah. Go team, go America, you know? Mm-hmm. Remember when Austin Powers wakes up and he's like, so we won right comrade yeah they're like no yeah so anyways we were talking and i said russia that's amazing do you speak russian he said yeah of course uh, i've i've spoke it for the last 15 years wow. i said did you learn as a child or you 
a Russian kid or, you know, yeah. whatever. And he said, no, I learned when I took my job after graduating university. I remember this guy. He went to the Department of Defense. And he had like six weeks to learn and they put him in like some crazy program, right? It was uh, six months. And then he was fairly conversant. Mm -hmm. And I said, six months. I, I would have thought this would be. And I said, can you read it? He said, I can read it pretty good now. Been doing it for my job as yeah, my for job. Yeah, 15 years. Yeah. The way he learned, though, is I'll always remember. He said, you learn really quickly. quickly blah, blah, blah. You learn really quickly when there's an old Russian lady drilling you mm. in class. I said, what do you mean? He said, there was five of us. And uh, you maybe know. you need someone to teach you uh, guitar. Like, you know where I do those uh, lightning rounds on Duolingo? Yeah. Maybe you need that. Need where it's like, hero. what's a D? Give me a D. What's your strumming pad? Do it again. <laughs> That's what I need. You need a little tough love. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Can we get into our letters now? Yes. Okay. This one's from Natalie. 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 Why do we say Natalie like that? Where did that come from? I'm forgetting. We were in Australia and mm. Natalie from VidCon. Um, yes. Was, uh, Everybody would holler at her. Natalie. 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 It was with the Australian accent. I apologize to all of our Tassies and Australians and New Zealanders who we probably offended with our horrible accent. Natalie. But we forever called Natalie from VidCon. Natalie. For and if years. we saw her today and said, Natalie, she'd be like, <laughs> here's your extra wristband. Yep. Exactly. And we'd be like, thank you. Yeah. Collect all seven. Ring. With our powers combined. Okay. This is from Natalie. Hello. And this is called, surprisingly, a doctor. Oh. Mm. Natalie's a doctor? It is I. Bird I go. Ah. <laughs> writing in with a story to share you ask for stories about doctors who shouldn't be doctors and wow do i have one for you actually i have several but i'll give you the most notable one a neurologist that i used to see for my vestibular migraine a migraine associated with vertigo ordered a brain mri to make sure all was clear that sounds good so far so good double check yourself when the specialist got the results back <clears throat> He called me up to inform me that my brain MRI showed I didn't ha uh, have either eighth cranial nerve. What? I don't know what that means. Missing a cranial nerve. I mean, I've never, I don't, I don't okay, let's just keep reading because I don't know what that means. I've never heard of such a thing, but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist because I'm not a neurologist, okay? <clears throat> the thing is, that would be a really good reason for dealing with extreme vertigo. However, several months later, I learned that this result could not have been true. I would not have been able to hear without my eighth cranial nerves. That's what I wonder, because each cranial nerve, I want to say, is there 10 or 12? I'd have to, anyway. But you have, they're responsible for certain things. They're, they're nerves, they connect, you know. So I would be surprised if you could not have them and wouldn't have other issues. What do nerves do? So... I know that they're they're sensors for your body, mm -hmm. right? So you 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 touch your finger, the nerves tell your t tell your uh, system. <laughs> okay, a vast network of nerves send electrical signals to and from other cells, okay. glands, and muscles. It's essentially the communication right. within our body. These nerves receive information from the world around you, and then nerves interpret that information and control your response. What I find fascinating about nerves is that it's almost i mean it is instantaneous right the second i touch my 12 finger, cranial nerves i thought i thought so ah ah uh, ah uh. okay but you know it's so fast like it's immediate you your mm -hmm. brain senses it because you're nerves... faster than fiber optics yes no i'm serious i don't know i, I don't think... know the speed honey you okay. can't test this i mean i don't know maybe they can but i don't know I'm just curious. It doesn't really matter. My opinion doesn't matter. But I that's why MS can be so debilitating in a lot of different ways is because essentially your communication system isn't insulated. The myelin sheaths are like they have sores either that dissolved develop. or and they're then, removed in little. Well, yeah, and they can heal themselves too, which is interesting. Yes, that's why damage. treatments can be can work and can kind of reverse some of the damage, but I don't know to what extent. Okay, back to her letter. So Bird Ico. Remember she couldn't um wouldn't have been able to hear. She didn't have her eighth cranial nerve. Thus, what I meant, what that meant was that that doctor effectively had just called me on the phone to tell me I was deaf. <laughs> Good job, doc. <laughs> called her on the phone. Right. <laughs> and they're a neurologist. Punch in the throat. I mean, maybe go they back know, to school. What's maybe wrong they know with you? something we don't know, but. 
Yeah, she says, as the saying goes, what do you call a doctor who graduated last in his class? Doctor. Doctor. Mm. Anyway, on the subject of medical stuff, this month is Rare Disease Month, with the 28th or the 29th on leap years being Rare Disease Day. With Rare Disease Day coming up really soon. That's kind of catchy <laughs> from a marketing standpoint. It's mm -hmm. like a rare day. And so we're going to put the rare diseases on the rare day. Ooh, well, the 29th on leap year days, yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's usually 28th. So mm -hmm. that happens every year. But I do like it. I like it. Okay. So with that coming up, I wanted to share about my new condition called migraine with brain stem aura, also known as basal uh, or bas basilar migraine or Bickerstaff syndrome. Hmm. So in your, ba is it your brain stem aura? So is it in your basal? Huh. In your latest hmm. episode of Ask Katie Anything, the one that's going to come out next week. Uh -huh. um, so the following episode, mm -hmm. you're talking with Dr. Ben Ryan, mm -hmm. and he talks He's about a neuroscientist. Yeah, yeah uh, epilepsy mm -hmm. and the aura. Yeah, that some people experience prior to it. Yep. I thought that was fascinating. It's really interesting. He's super fascinating. I I find his information to be very interesting, just because it's it's adjacent to what I do mm -hmm. and affects what I do, but it's out of my scope. You know, so it's like, oh, that makes so much sense. Like even talking with. Um, Dr. Jalal about sleep paralysis and stuff. I was like, oh, like then the more that I can learn about that, the more the stuff that I know is happening makes sense and has like an organic reason. But let's get back into the letter. And it says, so Bickerstaff syndrome. It's extremely rare with only three to four in 10,000 people having this type of migraine. It can cause loss of consciousness. And I would love to learn more about rare, other rare diseases if anyone has more to share. Yeah, I there was a... When I did the Healthy Voices conference that's used to be in, well, first it was in Chicago, then it was in Dallas. But anyway, it was a bunch of health advocates that would get together. There were quite a few rare disease advocates because one of the women who did that, she had um, Hashimoto's disease, which is, I guess, technically a rare disease. We also have members of our community. Carly has Hashimoto's. Um, and there were a couple others that I, I can't remember at the, at the time, like my brain, like at the moment can't remember but um that should that's my own problem but they advocate for more exploration more research because when they're rare it takes so much longer for things to move along because essentially there aren't enough people to test it on and it's not you know affecting that many people so it doesn't get as much money behind it does that make sense yeah okay also new paragraph this coming week the week following episode 101 is engineers week and my birthday well happy early birthday I graduated college last year, so it'll be my first time celebrating Engineers Week and my birthday as an engineer. All right. Do you get to pull the, the train horn? Since I'm a lot more fun than your stereotypical engineer, um, I will be whipping out my TI-84 to celebrate. Texas Instrument. <laughs> we were driving. Where is Texas Instruments? We've driven by it before. Are they outside of Dallas? I think it must be outside it of Richardson Dallas. Richardson or something like that? But it was so funny because... I just never thought about the fact that it was called Texas Instrument. I was just like, it's my calculator, blah, blah, blah. Right. But then when we were in Texas and we drove by, it's a huge, you guys, it's like a huge property. Massive. And the only reason why we noticed it is they have a giant calculator outside, like a giant they like don't 80 either. foot TI-84. They don't either. They, they, do. they have their little symbol on the sign. that It's the, it's the state of Texas outline. Right. And I guess I just never, I guess if I thought about it, I'd have been like, oh, they must be from Texas, but never thought about it. I believe. Um, Ross Perot, the former uh, uh, presidential candidate. candidate. Oh, they're outside of Austin, it says Texas Instruments. Oh, I believe he founded the company. Oh, headquarters is in Dallas. Sorry, we were correct, but we've driven by it anyway. Yeah. Funny. Ross Perot? Yes, Ross Perot. The big ears? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was the founder of it. In, in fact, he's such a cowboy. Um, and I he's don't know. He's probably mega rich. Oh, he was a I billionaire. Mean, I had to spend how many, well, not me, but my parents, on those stupid ass calculators because they'd be like you have to have this one you know look if you if your calculator needs more than a cosine <laughs> <laughs> you're getting into some pretty heady water i i can't imagine a i, I don't even understand how a scientific calculator like who knows how all the buttons work on a calculator do people still use texas instruments they must now we have phones and we just speak to the air okay google how much is a scientific calculator 
any information about that. She doesn't know. She doesn't okay. like to speak about her competitors. So anyways, I'm still not certain what activity I'll be doing, but it's a big birthday. So I'm hoping for some fun ideas from you or the audience. Ooh, birthday ideas. Mm. Um, is it your 30th? Because that's a big birthday. Is it your 21st? I sure. think you should get uh, find the the closest hot air balloon no. and go for a ride. No. Okay. <laughs> Been shot down. Hmm. What? I find the birthdays that are the most fun for me are getting like your close friends together and, and going out to dinner and then dancing. But what if you went dancing in a hot air balloon? No, you can only have a couple people in there. And you also said you went hot air ballooning and it was stupid and you hated it. The view was beautiful. The the landing was not stuck when we came down did you fall out of the basket uh no but we saw people i've already talked about it, i think on the podcast but we oh. saw a, a hot air balloon accident so you know that was not good but you just told me you did not like being and you didn't it was not enjoyable it was pretty cool it i think it'd be cool if you had it private you know like it oh, was you, you and your own friends not like you and eight strangers eight strangers yeah and you have to make small talk you know it's kind of that boring sounds terrible yeah most of my friends have done it, did it their own. It was just them or like them and one other couple that they mm. knew. What about a museum? Maybe you could go treat yourself to going to. Boring. Okay. What Boring. A... Okay. What, what do you suggest? She could go snowboarding. Yeah. Now we're talking. See, really think about this, Sean. If, if for your birthday, I was like, let's go hot air ballooning. You'd be like, fuck <laughs> right off. Or if I was like, hey, let's go to a museum. You'd be like, really? Yeah. How about we get a fan boat? And we, we jet across the Everglades and we chase alligators. That'd be fun. You want to go into Florida? Wear the goggles, you know? Or yeah. Louisiana? Yeah, for sure. Did go, we no, no gators down there. <laughs> None of those things do you want to do. No. I don't know what I want to do. I remember going in the Everglades when we went down to Florida when I was, I don't even know, like 12. And the amount of bugs that hit my goggles. And I had like a handkerchief over my face. I was a bandit. Anyway, it was disgusting the amount of bugs that were stuck on my all person. right so natalie katie has poo-pooed that idea as well no because it's a birthday mm -hmm. i think go shorty you go you get yeah you're gonna party like it's your birthday you want to have a good meal have some drinks and boogie down or you can go snowboarding and then play some card games at night and have some lasagna relax by the fire lasagne Las sweet sweet lasagne what do you guys think what would you do because i I'm going to have my 40th birthday coming up here pretty quick. You're going to have your 50th. We're getting older, you guys. Jeez, you're really aging me here. Both of us. I'm Russian ahead. You're Russian. I'm Russian ahead. Duh. Not, not Russian. Duh. Yes, comrade. <laughs> Let's get back to the letter, huh? Okay, okay. Sean doesn't want to consider being 50, and I don't want to consider being 40. So we'll just move right along. Oh. I'm still not certain what activity, so we need some help. I'll read the comments and Discord to see if anyone has cool birthday celebration activity ideas for me. I'll write in to let you know how I ended up celebrating. I love it. Appreciate it. As promised, I am signing this email with my cattywampus bird feather quill. See episode 80, pinned comment with a smiley face. Congrats on 100 episodes. All my best. Okay, here's the... Oh, we can't open it. Unsupported file type. Yeah. <laughs> what is... I don't know. Okay. See if you can. It's it's the my iPhone signed with the quill. Okay. Moving on to our Aus Austrian correspondent. Ah. And Minister of Music, Rock and Roll. What is doing is African <gasps> Ambassador of Rock and Roll. I was close. It's Christoph. Guardian of guitars. Oh, so good. The mm, the bouncer of the beats. <laughs> okay. Ready? It's from Christoph. And it is entitled cancel culture we need to talk more and my worst illness and my band just rocks okay it says hi katie sean roxy and the whole otdm universe christoph here your ambassador of rock and roll musical genius in his own rights i agree the discussion about cancel culture reached a whole new level with the conflict between neil young joe rogan and spotify i don't know much about rogan but i do love neil young and honestly i do not use spotify Anyways, the idea you brought up that Neil Young should go into Joe Rogan's show to discuss is brilliant, and he should definitely do this. This reminds me of the story of President Obama, and I don't know if you remember, but there was this black college professor who was arrested in his own home, which was in a, you know, quote unquote, white neighborhood because of the color of his skin. 
Obama then invited the professor, the cop who arrested him, and Joe Biden into a discussion within the White House. And I remember the picture of the four of them sitting in the garden, drinking a beer together and talking to each other. I think this is the way we should do it. We should talk more. And if we don't want to talk, we should accept each other. I agree. This is yeah. brilliant. Brilliant, Christoph. We need to extend you past just the ambassador of rock and roll and musical genius in his own right onto... The fifth beetle. Give peace a chance, Christoph the said. The communication... Strategist. Commodore. What, what, for, what would, I like those Cs. Two Cs. The peace pursuer. Mm, the conversation collector. Mm. For the advancement we're, we're of peaceful... Work, people workshop this. We'll come up with something good. Okay. I think we should talk more. Like, I don't like the protests against the vaccination and the vax mandate we now have in Austria. But then I think to myself, I've been on so many protests myself, as long as they don't harass other people, what some of these protesters do, let them have their gatherings. A sound democracy should be able to handle this. I agree. That's why we have the right to do those things. I think people being upset, you know, should be able to peacefully protest. I don't like when people hijack and then harm others. We had a member of our community who's um, a police officer in Canada and you know people are against the police right now the a lot of the people who've hijacked that trucker whatever you call it I don't even know the convoy yes some oh. people have hijacked it and are, are like not peacefully protesting anymore I saw yesterday uh, some video footage of uh, a line of police mm -hmm. walking past a line of I guess protesters mm -hmm. and they were all shaking hands it was like at the end of a hockey game in a oh, tournament yeah. shaking hands yeah, I was like, like good game good game good game yeah, mm -hmm. yeah and I thought that was nice that you know maybe there was more to the narrative but yeah neither here nor there I just well and things we saw a peaceful protest get hijacked when we had the BLM protest in Santa Monica the people protesting early on just walked along Ocean Avenue it's fine but then there were some people that came in to like loot and that had nothing to do with you know what i mean it's like there are a lot of people that are just like leeches they just hang on to something that's happening to like cause chaos and like burn our city and smash and grab and yeah if there's that's a movement what's fucked. if there's a movement happening hijacking it to mm. push your agenda you know that happens right yeah it's so, a bummer okay yeah, man so back into christoph and i agree christoph i really like what you have to say it says and as a story of my medical history oh yeah medical <clears throat> here we go as a child maybe five years old I was once quite sick, so my mom went to the doctor with me. He sent us to the hospital, who said that there is nothing to worry about, and sent me home. Excuse me. I feel like I'm masticating. Okay. Well, that was not a good idea, okay. as apparently I developed a high fever and blacked out. <gasps> so the ambulance came once again, and then they found that I have meningitis. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. I, I had to get... There was an outbreak in colleges like the year or two before I went to school. Mm -hmm. And so I had to get my vaccination for meningitis, which hadn't been required for a long time, I guess. We had an outbreak in high school, not at our high school, but uh, at another mm -hmm. Which high means school. it could be yours if it's neighboring, right? Yeah, you know, um, I remember they, they were doing contact tracing mm -hmm. and it was basically anyone who was hanging out at the shopping mall in the oh. food court, did you know so-and-so? And then a couple of people that I knew got it or had contact no they had contact so then they had to take the the medicine mm -hmm. i don't know if it's antivirals or whatnot mm -hmm. but everyone was like oh man my pee is bright orange you know like everyone <laughs> yeah, was talking about that funny yeah but i think i don't think anyone passed away but it was pretty severe it can kill you yeah. it's, it's like even if you're healthy and young and so it's a virus that attacks uh there's spinal meningitis and there's the brain one right there's two different types i'm not sure maybe they're the same but then it's swelling and fluid on the brain you're correct? talking things i don't know meningitis is an acute inflammation of the protective membranes covering the brain so is it like the blood brain barrier maybe just the membrane that the goes sac because there is a thing like when you dissect a brain there's like a little you make an incision because i've only done it on like i think it's sheep's brains but they have it's like a little uh membrane protective covering a protectant, a protectant to keep the liquid in so between your inflammation skull of that membrane and the membrane that covers your spinal cord known mm -hmm. collectively as the meninge, or meninges, M-E-N-I-N-G-E-S. Meninges. meninges. Meninges, so meningitis. Where are my ninjas at? <laughs> well, hence, <laughs> hence meningitis, the meninges. Right. The most common symptoms are fever, headache, and neck stiffness. 
Other symptoms include confusion or altered consciousness, vomiting, and Ill inability to tolerate light or loud noises. Hmm. Okay, so we could really get into it, but let's not. So Christoph contracted meningitis? Yeah, he had meningitis. Let's get into this. Found that I have meningitis, and I ended up staying in the hospital for several weeks, hooked up to a machine, and being pretty much spaced out most of the time. Whoa. The meningitis does that. It's, you know, makes you all like, ooh. Also probably the medicine, too. Okay. All I remember is that I was in a huge room, and there was another kid in there, but for some reason, the beds were arranged that I couldn't see him. And I was in no position to move my head. Yeah, because your neck is all stiff. I wonder if they did it on purpose. I feel like they usually have the beds facing the same direction. So the you'd TV. have to like, yeah, you're looking towards the TV. Um, okay. And my grandfather's sister came regularly to visit me. And to this day, more than 40 years later, and 20 years after she passed away, my father speaks highly of her in this case. Else they did not have the best relationship. Oh, but she showed up for Christoph and that meant a lot to your dad. Oh, sweet. Anyways, after a while, I was sent home cured, but I guess this was the most life. Oh, this was the most life threatening illness I've ever had in my life. Without the persistence of my mom, who repeatedly called the ambulance, it might have been too late for me. What a loss for this world that would have been. I agree. Agreed. Agreed. Else, not a lot is going on in my life. Still looking for a job. It was a downer when I was turned down last month after the second round of interviews with the company, but on a positive side we do have band rehearsals and we are getting better each week sweet Woo! and it's funny sometimes new songs just flow out of me just like that i cannot write lyrics i leave this to our singer but i can certainly create a good tune sometimes it's like that i feel like when it comes to creativity i love that book big magic because she talks about not putting too much pressure on your creative bone like that urge to just create you can't force it you have to just like allow it to be and to fertilize it with things like giving it things to to think about and pontificate and you know go out outdoors and she says you should see other art and it's a great book the first half the second half i didn't like as much and if you turn a blind eye to the noise of the world mm -hmm. you can uh the muse will show up mm -hmm. and the muse will uh help you write you know sean has a wild imagination no, I'm, I'm pretty I'm, sure i'm kidding i'm kidding i'm I pretty keep, sure no you're right and do you ever feel that way where like uh yeah, there's just like something the, mm -hmm. there's something flowing through you you're kind of like an instrument yeah as opposed to uh the creator of it yeah i feel that way sometimes it is that way like you're just the medium with which it's yeah brought and, into the world and if you can learn to silence your mind mm -hmm. then you know it'll uh, flow right through you yeah and then Ooh. boom that's how you write a beatles tune <laughs> Uh, Paul so, McCartney, man, he, you know, those guys, they had the really good muse that showed up. I have the one that's like kind of. A, Even know, Taylor Swift, she writes all her own music and creates. She's quite a musical genius. For sure. Dolly Parton, another good one. For sure. Yeah. Sean just only likes to talk about the people that he likes. No, no. I think those are great examples. And I heard Tom Petty once talk about the same thing where he was just like, man, I don't know. Sometimes the songs just show up. It shows up for you. Yeah. It's even. It, that's just how things are i feel like sometimes i like even writing a book which is a totally different thing but like some chapters are like pulling teeth it was really hard for me to like get myself to do it other chapters like uh i remember my first book the chapter about toxic relationships i wrote in like one day my rough draft i was like boom it was like 28 pages i was like done and then you edit it and whatever but some things are just easier some things just come through you easily yeah creativity is a gift and it's yeah. also a skill that you have to hone. It's so it also a curse. I'm just kidding. <laughs> the gift and curse of being too creative. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he um, has been writing good tunes. And together with my band, we twist them into great songs. Now, all we have to do is check that we finally get some gigs. My original plan of having our first gig in 2020 didn't work out so well. I know. Um, I was just talking to an old colleague of mine, Jamie, and she signed. So she got her. I knew her when she was getting her license. Am I that boring? No, no. The the tea I was did. wearing on. Oh, the tea. Um, anyway, I knew her when she was just getting her license. We ran a, a group together because she needed a licensed therapist to help her. So I, you know, ran it with her. And we just recently connected. And she was saying how her her practice had grown and she joined some other therapists. They put a group together and she just had signed the lease on this like twelve hundred square foot office space in February of twenty twenty. And she was like damn but she still used it because even though she was remote she did all you know she didn't have to do it from her apartment giving people more privacy and stuff you know it's been hard for a lot of people so she was glad she had the space right okay 
So his idea of having a gig in 2020 didn't work out either. But now that the restrictions are lifted, by and by, we are ready. Yes, we are so ready I wonder ready how big your set this. list is. I know, I'm excited. And again, congratulations on 100 episodes of OTDM. It's a joyride and has become a fixture on my weekends. And I guess I'm not the only one who waits on Saturdays for the release of a new episode. Keep it up, and it has become a great community project. Lots of love from Austria, Christoph. Of course, of course. We got your flag right there, buddy. I know, you got to turn it. We should put it to the side so you can see uh, what it is. Because yeah. there it just looks like a little red and white. Oh, yeah. Shoot. We will fix that. Don't worry. Okay. Are you ready to move on? Yeah. Well, congratulations on band practice. Yeah. I'm excited to hear. And I, I'm curious what the set list consists I of. I know. Any standards? Any... Uh, yeah. Any burn burners? You know, ones that really get the, the like crowd get going? Get everybody going? Like, How uh, exciting. You know, Louie Luai, you know. A Louie Luai. Oh, baby, me gotta go now. Is that what's called Louie Luai? Yeah. Luai. Louie Louie. Yeah, I was like, oh, okay. I was like, I thought it was called Louie Louie. <laughs> <laughs> Lou Who is that? Is that the Kingsman? No. Mm. I don't know. Anyways, next That's letter. That's not important. Next Let's letter is from our science wanker. Oh. Sue. So, and it is entitled more vitamin stuff i'm excited it says hello to all three of you mammals from the science wanker right did the vitamin c discovery impact my life expectancy question mark short answer no the discovery of vitamin c and the later development of synthesized supplements came hundreds of years later than the discovery that you need fruits and vegetables to be healthy Scurvy, the disease caused by the deficiency of vitamin C, had killed millions of people throughout history. I do know that sailors a lot of times would keep lemons on board because they just they needed the vitamin C. But the development of giving sailors citrus fruits, so I can read my mind, and the cultivation of potatoes in colder climates had mostly eliminated it. When you do potatoes have vitamin C? They must. Interesting. Vitamin P. For patat. Patat. No, I don't know what's in potatoes. I really don't. I just thought it was a starchy, useless tuber. No, they're delicious. I know. Sure. I love the flavor, but yeah. you know, I can't get enough potatoes. But I don't think that there's, mm, there's got to be something, some nutritional value to a potato. Vitamin <laughs> K. No, that would be like leafy, dark green stuff. I can't imagine it has vitamin C. Um, potatoes 101. It says potatoes are underground tubers that grow on the roots of the potato plant. Solanum tuberosum. Otherwise really, known as delicioso. Really easy to grow. Why do, don't you hate, oh yes, cooked potatoes with skin. Mm -hmm. I don't really like the skins. Are a good source of many vitamins and minerals such as potassium and vitamin C. Not to fact check you, Sue, but you know. <laughs> I know, because she. I was like, she mentioned potatoes because they must have vitamin C. I just right. never knew. I didn't know either. We now I can tell We should have trusted our science wanker. I'm sorry, Sue. When someone says, looks at me and says, why sure. are you getting a plate of French fries? I need the vitamin C, dude. I got the scurvy. That's what you tell them. I got the scurvy. Okay. When you look at significant reasons for increasing life expectancy, you have to look at things like improved sanitation, agreed, universal health care, immunizations, especially for TB. Yeah, tuberculosis killed a shitload of people. Um, I loved Moulin Rouge, the, the film. And she gets tea. Well, she also drinks a lot and has a drug addiction to absinthe. But Nicole Kidman's character has, I think she dies of tuberculosis, I think oh. is what it is, because she gets that co the bloody cough. Uh, <laughs> a lunger. Mm -hmm. Anyway, improvements in obstetrics, obstetrics and infant care. Yeah, because mm -hmm. a lot of... What infant was, mortality rate or, has never been lower yeah. than it is now. It's never which been is, lower, Mr. Butlicker. Um, anyway, the when I was at J and J at yeah. their uh, museum, they were talking about how fifty percent of people who had surgeries because they didn't understand sanitation at the time, right. or not sanitation, but sanitizing and like cleanliness when it, bacterial infections. They didn't understand bacteria at all. They didn't even know it existed because they technically couldn't see it. Right? Um, they, if you had surgery, you had a fifty percent chance of dying just from infection alone. Yeah, which is crazy. Yeah, I think we're we're living in a golden era. Obviously, not everyone has access to uh, clean water, but mm -hmm. I think clean water is the number one thing that you need to do to establish a healthy and make, society. And they're making a lot of uh, moves to to make that more accessible to people. For sure, but I I think I take advantage. Obviously, we take advantage of it, right? Like we let clean water. There's that meme where the little kid is looking at uh, the pool, mm -hmm. and he's like, 
let me get this straight, you add chlorine to all this clean water, so you're basically mm-hmm. poisoning it so mm-hmm. that you can swim around in it. Mm-hmm. And um, That's the truth. Yeah. That's like we were just listening to Lex Fridman's podcast last night, mm-hmm. and he was talking, he's from Russia, right? Yes. And he was talking about when he first moved to the States, uh, seeing all of the fruits and vegetables, like seeing grocery stores, like just the surplus of food that we have in the United States, like blew him away. And he was like addicted to bananas for a while because they couldn't get those in Russia. And you have to wait in these huge long lines. And the other guy was talking about pineapples and like how crazy it was just kind of interesting because I think sometimes, especially now, because people are just wanting to fight about Lord knows what I say. This is, this is a green uh, colored cone. No, it's purple. Fuck you. Fuck you. People are just shouting about nonsense. It doesn't even matter. Okay. Making up arguments just to be mad when in reality, we should be grateful for the fact that we can have bananas whenever we want. Yeah, the conversation went even further than that, saying that we live in a golden age. I spaced age. out, I started playing Candy Crush. Right. Sorry. But the fact that you can even play Candy Crush, you know, yeah. there's electricity that flows through the walls to charge yeah. some weird device that has- I have a min- plug in the floor that I plug my iPad into because it tried to die on me. And what is an iPad? And all these components that are sourced from around the world. And like, mm-hmm. we would have no way of being able to build something like that. Yeah. Yet for the grace of- you know, we're built on a civilization, like a collective. Well, yeah, and the bananas, I mean, I went to a bananeria in Costa Rica that Dole owned, and the fact that those bananas are the ones I see in my grocery store, and I don't have to worry about them getting there. I just assume they'll be there every time. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. You know, we're living in the lap of luxury, and we sometimes are. I have to remind myself of that, you know, and I'm like, oh, what a crap day. I'm like, you got to look for the positives. Always look on the bright side of life. Boop, 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 boop. Boop, boop, boop. Okay. Life could be a piece of shit when you look at it, but always look on the brain. I knew you want to finish your ditty. You can finish. Yeah. I couldn't remember the lyrics. So oh, I, st- okay. I stalled out. <laughs> I was like, I can't help you. Are we back? Ready for rest of Sue's things? Okay. The discovery of vitamins as a whole has had significant impacts in some cases, as well as highlighting the importance of nutrition in general. The discovery of vitamin D had much more significance. You felt that when you had low vitamin D, you had like oh. no energy. Lack of vitamin D causes a number of issues, mostly linked to bone problems such as rickets. Rickety cricket. Yeah, what are rickets? I think it's fragile bones. Like, Says uh, she, it causes bone deformities in children. Yeah. Hmm. But vitamin D is also linked to all sorts of things from maternal health, reaction to COVID infection, and even schizophrenia. Yeah, because they've been saying for COVID to like ward it off or to get your body Revved stronger. Up to fight. It's vitamin D, zinc, vitamin C. Quercetin, that's another. Uh, oh, quercetin. Anyway, yeah. I remember the vitamin D, C, and is it B? Zinc. Oh, zinc, yeah. I think you just get you know get them all. Collect them all. Collect all four, I, okay. I get a little confused by the vitamin Bs though, because there's like B, six B12, of them. B12, I think is the that's one. That's the that, one that gets you zingy. Well, my, my mom had a friend, and again, this is like anecdotal evidence, not a doctor. But my mom had a friend who went through breast cancer and they put her on these huge amounts of vitamin B, yeah. B12. And so she'd asked her doctor, my mom's friend, like, should I have been taking this like all the time? He's like, yes, everybody should be taking B12. And so my mom, cause my mom's like a vitamin person anyway, she went on like, and she still is on like the vitamin B12 kick. Like it's the ones you have to put under your tongue. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I took it today. Me too. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't even have to put it on your tongue. You can chew it. That one you it can. It tastes like cherries. It's it great. It depends on the whatever one, because the other ones it has to dissolve, the yeah. one we had before. I do that. I do B3, um, uh, nicotinamide. Mm-hmm. Um, resveratrol. Resveratrol. Um, Balance of nature. Yep. Yeah. Vitamin D, vitamin K, uh, Dr. Barlow's. I, that's where I get a lot of them now. We get, yeah, we get a lot of, uh, that's where I take my mushrooms. Okay. Ready? Vitamin D is even thought to be the reason that white people exist. I thought we were anti-vitamin D, like your skin's like, no, right? Because isn't that from the sun? Yeah, I, don't, I think you produce melanin. So uh, melanin explain more. <laughs> is a barrier mm-hmm. and your body can't, pr- I'm, I'm guessing here, but can't produce that vitamin as easily. So as we went further north and and left the cradle of civilization. Mm -hmm. Because aren't we all from Africa, they believe? For the most part, I believe that uh, that's what they believe this species of Because I had in my 23 and me some sub-Saharan African. Right, I think they, you know, everyone kind of left Mm -hmm. the the, the Nile. And uh, the Nile's a river, by the way. It's It's more than a river in Egypt. (laughs) 
that's, that's the joke. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I flubbed it. But I think as we went further north, we needed vitamin D. And so, so our pigment went down so we could absorb it. Yeah, the sunglasses of the human uh, mm-hmm. protective system. That's like the cataracts. Those are nature sunglasses. Right. And so then we were able to produce more as we went further north, which I believe we needed to ward off uh, a deficient immune system produced by cold weather. Well, probably. Ding, 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 ding. Bing, bing, bing. That's my final answer. Okay, let's see what, let's see what Sue has to say. When our black ancestors left Africa and spread across colder climates, it's been shown that they evolved lighter skin independently in a number of locations. This is likely in response to the lack of UV light, which is essential for maintaining a vitamin D3 production in the skin. We take vitamin D3. Mm -hmm. In fact, you can correlate the lightness of skin tone in indigenous populations with the amount of UV radiation in the region. Oh, so you'd be darker or lighter depending on the UV. Yeah, Isn't the human body fucking amazing? It's a sunscreen. Wah. That's all it is. Well, I know, but I just, the fact that I didn't even think about the gradients of of color coming from, depending on how high the UV is, right. not just, oh, it's sunny. How high is the UV? The closer you are to the equator, mm-hmm. typically the, the darker your pigmentation mm-hmm. is. Um, and that's why I think racism is stupid. <laughs> you know, like I mean, we're that, all the same. In many, some, <laughs> of us are, some of us just live in, you know, I always brighter remember, climates. This sounds silly, but I always remember this, uh, Fool's Russian is one of my favorite movies. Salma Hayek, Matthew Perry. It's a great film. I love it. Such a chick flick. Put it on. It's a feel good. Anyway, she is from Arizona. And she, I think, I believe her character is supposed to be Mexican. Because she goes down to stay with her grandma who's in Mexico. Like, I don't know what state. Oaxaca. Anyway, so she is in Arizona. And she's with Matthew who's like a white dude, right? And he's like from a like a family of wasps out of Connecticut or something. And she said, my dad, they're standing on this big, essentially fissure in the land, almost like uh, two plates. Okay. You know, it's like a big, it's not the Grand Canyon, but something, Some, imagine the small the, sliver the of that. Great subduction zone. I don't know, maybe. Anyway, and she said, my dad always explained that because she didn't like being like different growing up, like darker hair than some people. And, you know, kids kids want to fit in. And her dad said, um, you know, we were all squirrels. We're, we're like squirrels. And then there were the land divided. And because, you know, they lived over there, they had skinnier tails and we had bushier tails over here. And I, I'm, I'm butchering the the beautiful writing that whoever wrote that script did. But essentially, it's just like, we just were different because we're in different parts of the world and we needed bushier tails. And they needed webbed feet, you know, to fly. And so anyway, it was kind of a cute description of how her dad talked to her about why they were different. And it's just evolution, right? Yeah, ex- essentially. You, humans are so adaptable. You can mm-hmm. see evolution. It's really cool. It, it, at work, right? You, mm-hmm. you can see like everyone has different characteristics. And typically it's just because you have not, you're not a mutation. You're like a. a well, it's a, evol- you're evolving yeah, because. You, some things you need, some things you don't need, and things that you don't need are going to fall by the wayside. Things you do need, you're, your body's going to beef up. I don't know why I have four nipples. He doesn't. And a prehensile tail. I've got nipples, you milk me? Okay. So, back to Sue's letter. Um, I could go on and on and bore you all silly. We're clearly not bored at all, Sue. I found that very fascinating. Stimulating, really. Yeah. So, I'll stop there for now, but let me know if you want more things like this. My brain is bursting with things like this to share. Send them all. Sue, please. No, we need a science segment. Yeah, take perhaps. care all, Sue. I think we only have time for one more letter. I'm okay. sorry, we're not going to get caught up, you guys, because I have another call I have to hop on to. Um, move into David Redacted. Hello, David. Hi, David, and it's entitled OTDM Land Update and Accutane. Okay. Hello, Katie, Sean, and the OTDM universe. Hello, David. Hey, bud. It's the Right Honorable David Redacted, Prime Minister of OTDM Land, bringing you an update on our great country. Before I start, I was thrilled that you read my letter on episode 99 as the date the podcast was released was my birthday. I'm redacted years old. Happy birthday. (laughs) Redacted years old. Belated redacted birthday. OTDM Land update. Good news for all you sports fans out there. I've made a deal with Delaware North to bring hockey to our country. The team will be called the OTDM Land Colts. Colts. Name subject to change. There's only one problem. As part of the agreement, we, OTDM Land, would build a sports complex, the Mm. Felita Arena. The Felita Arena. Or Felita, F-E-L-I-T-A. Felita. Felicia? Felita. Felicia? Felita. Felicia, Felita. 
I like it. I think we can do that. Thank what you. What does Del- it mean? Thank you, Delaware North, for bringing hockey to our country. <laughs> we had the money earmarked, but the money has gone missing. <gasps> My government is searching to locate the missing funds. The only lead we have is a hundred million invoice for dog treats, pinball machines, and guitars. <laughs> what are you guys saying? It's a lot of allegations. Mm-hmm. All shipped to Austin, Texas. I have a bad feeling we may never know who took all that money. I mean, anyone could have absconded with the country funds, David. I don't know why you're bringing this to my I'm attention. I'm not superstitious. But I'm a little stitious. I'm a little, <laughs> a little suspicious. Okay. We may have... Uh, to use the funds earmarked for blackjack and hookers as well and well-run healthcare system, or we're going to have to raise taxes to pay for the arena if the money isn't recovered. Mm. It's such a hard decision to make. What am I to do? Or I can sell the naming rights of the arena. Who knows? That's a better way. Mm-hmm. I don't think anyone who may have accidentally taken the hundred million dollars and <laughs> spent it on the wrong things. I don't think that person should be, you know, shamed for their mis misdeeds i think that maybe we could raise taxes in another area and maybe we could sell some naming rights that's a good idea david yeah, it could i, I be, think that maybe it could be like the t-mobile arena like everybody else has some yeah. kind of branded name well maybe we call it the myspace uh, mm. arena you know mm-hmm. four square four square yeah mm-hmm. four loco mm-hmm. uh okay yeah. okay I, I think that's a good idea good idea thanks for the updates okay moving on to accutane Okay. In episode 99, Sean mentioned taking Accutane and having a bad experience. As someone taking the medication, I can say that I'm having a positive experience with the drug so far. Fantastic. I've always struggled with acne, but never addressed it until a few years ago. My dermatologist recommended Accutane as a last resort. So after exhausting all other ac- acne treatments and my insurance agreeing to pay for it, as insurance doesn't like to pay for shit, yeah. agreed. I began taking it in the summer of 2021. Okay. Since taking it, my skin has cleared up significantly. Unfortunately, I only had two significant breakouts that cleared up fast. Amazing. That's wonderful. As a result, I feel less continuous and more confident about my skin. And everybody has given me positive comments. There's a lot of paperwork you have to fill out in triplicate before you can start. Wow. Not only initial practically, but every paragraph and you have to sign it with your blood. Mm, makes sense. Prick your finger. A, a lot of warnings. And yeah. it, it's a hard, you know. Drugs do have positive side, uh, positive effects, but, but there are, effects. you know, the, the heavier the drug, the more side effects. So well, that's because you're I'll, messing with the system. Everything's yeah. connected, right? Yeah. I think the way, and I could be wrong, but the way Accutane works is it, it shrinks the, uh, the sebaceous glands mm-hmm. and therefore, but anyways, I, I'm not quite certain, but it's powerful and it, and it really, really works. However, mm-hmm. it, it, it does have, as I experienced, but. Yeah, he says there's dozens of side effects, black box warning label listed, including dry eyes, dry eyes, nosebleeds, back pains, depression, other mental other mental health concerns, and emergencies, and Crohn's disease, which is what happened in Rebecca. That's crazy. I didn't know that was actually a warning on it. Mm-hmm. And birth defects, which you must take a pregnancy test each month if you're capable of getting pregnant. Wow. A personal setback that I face while taking the medication is not taking acetaminophen um, hmm. or Tylenol. Accutane can damage the liver as well as Tylenol. And ty- Tylenol is the only over-the-counter pain reliever that I could take since I cannot take ibuprofen. Mm. Oh, yeah, because of, well, reasons. In addition, I suffer from migraines. And recently, um, I suffered a rotator cuff injury. Ow, ow, ow. Pretty and, severe. And while my primary care physician's suggestion of using mindfulness can only go so far. So I look forward to when I no longer need to take the meds. Accutane treatment could last from six to nine months okay so it's a short-lived treatment i didn't even know that i go in to see my dermatologist at the end of february and hopefully i'll have completed treatment or have only another month to go before i go i have three questions for you two hopefully you won't hate me for asking them no i mean ask away doubtful number one growing up what is something you hated you can't explain why even today Hmm. Hmm. strong word strong Mm -hmm. word something as a kid that i hated I can't explain why. Well, I mean, there's a lot of stuff I hated as a kid. I was funny about certain kinds of food. I hated broccoli a lot, and I don't know why. Um, I hated milk at other people's houses. Don't know why that was. It just mm. kind of grossed me out. I, again, don't know why. Um, so food stuff like that, don't know why. But then also, the funny thing was, is that I was always scared of really tall men even my uncle brett that is you guys looks almost identical to my dad 
So you're like, mm, they're almost twins. They're only a year apart. They look very much alike. And as a kid, I was terrified of Brett, which totally bummed him out because he let, loved kids and right. want, like would always come. I'd be like, ah, I don't know why. I was never abused. I never had any man like harm me. Always scared. Yeah. Run away. Hide behind my own dad, who was also a very large man. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's just self-preservation. Because my mom's like, it only lasted for a little while, and then you like grew out of it, essentially. But I would like hide behind my dad's legs and like peek. I don't know. I was really shy as a kid, so maybe that was why. Mm. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. But only my dad and Papa were okay. Everybody else, suspect. I was afraid of the basement. And mm. I don't know why, because nothing ever bad happened down there. Mm. But, you know, the worst fear that I can remember is being asked to go get something out of the basement. Ooh. So I still don't like to do stuff like that. You'd open the door and you'd look. The, 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 and you'd flick on the light. And why are the lights always terrible down there? Right. It's like one little bulb hanging. Well, this was a semi-finished basement, mm. if I recall properly. So we had wood paneling and we had a so TV like down there. it was kind of fancy. Yeah, yeah it, it was It was okay. Uh, but in the basement, there's always the workroom or the, you know, where you have like storage stuff, like cans of paint and some tools yeah, and yeah. stuff. Like if you don't have a garage, it goes in the basement. Yeah. And the, the, the freezer chest was down there. Mm. I remember sometimes you get asked, oh, can you get chicken thighs yeah. or something? Go get the bacon out of the freezer. Something, like, okay. right? Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh my God, I gotta go down there. You gotta psych yourself up at the top of the stairs. You know, you're like five mm. or 15 years old, whatever. <laughs> You flick no on the judgments. light, you look around, you're like, oh, oh, and you make a mad dash. You run Pum. down there, you you scurry, you slide in your socks, you, you get to the freezer, you open it, you grab whatever, you you slam it. You don't even turn the light on for that room. You like use the freezer light and you're gone back up the stairs. But all you're thinking is that that last set of stairs or the, the return journey, that's where the that's hand where is going to reach through, get the you through the stairs and grab your foot mm -hmm. and then pull you back down to the dark basement and then the light will go off in the door and you'll never be heard from again. <gasps> All for some stupid chicken. I know. Damn it. I was terrified of the basement. I know. Was, isn't that so funny? It I, was unfounded. I don't know. Kit, well, for a long time, and I still don't like spiders, but uh, I blame it on watching arachnophobia, which is kind of funny because I saw a commercial. They were playing it on some show. It was like, and you know, old movies that they bring back up. Oh my God. Those spiders could not look more fake. I was like, geez, guys, the, the, the like robotic. But as a kid, oh so real also cgi just wasn't what it is now but yeah it's funny when you're a kid while you're afraid of certain things sometimes you just don't have any rhyme or reason i, I always think was, it's like uh, some kind of self-preservation well that's it there's an innate where i was like big men are scary yeah that's mother nature keeping you alive when you get mm -hmm. that like mm -hmm. pit in your stomach and like the fight flight freeze yeah me it was Pew! always uh flight mm -hmm. sometimes freeze i'd hide I was mostly flight. I would run. Yeah. I'm so fast. Right. He's your... <laughs> okay. I'm gone. Well, I hope that answers your question. Okay, question number two. We yes. three. What activity do you hate doing with a passion, mm. but you do it anyways because you're the only one that can do it right? Or you're the only one that can do it, right? If you want to do it, do it right, right. Do um, it with me. Hmm. Activity that I hate doing with a passion. I mean, there's lots of stuff I don't like doing. Right. Uh, as a child, again, I used to hate mowing the lawn, mm. but it's not like I was the only one who could do it right. It's mm -hmm. just that, so I guess he's asking for something that I think I'm good at. Hmm. Yeah, that you're really good at. Oh, uh, usually stuff on the computer, mm -hmm. you know, when it comes to editing. Or, like our work? Or, I was thinking yeah, of Photoshop that Photoshop or anything. Like if I really want to nail something, mm -hmm. it, I'm, I'm very uh, particular about how things are edited, how things you know, you don't really see it in, in these videos because we're just throwing these ones out there. But if I have to edit something for a client. Um, How rude. I am I am your biggest client. <laughs> we are our biggest client. But no, <laughs> you know, like I could spend, I could obsess yeah, you could over really the, obsess over yeah, it. Yeah, by the frame. Oh like my God, I remember timing. you did that interior design video. I won't name the company, but this French song that you play. Oh my God, you guys. I would leave for work and it would be going and I'd come back from work and it was going and I like don't even know what the words were, but forever that song was in my head. And I was like, yeah. Sean, for the love of God, turn the volume off. That's horrible. I'm sick of it. Well, he obsessed over it for weeks. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you on that. Although I will be honest, I've never been good. That's the funny thing about me. I've never been good with like group projects. Like I always am like, I'm... I'm super competitive even with myself and I want like a, a plus plus. I want like a hundred percent. So 
I don't trust anybody else to like do the work. I'm like, and I'm going to do the work, like, you know, I want to do it myself. And so it's taken me quite a few years to even trust someone to like assist me in research or putting together a script outline or anything. But we do have Fabs who helps me and I think she does a really great job. And I have let go of that. And it's funny with me, I used to also be like a clean freak and I didn't trust anybody else to do the cleaning of the house or apartment or whoever I live with. Like I would do it even though I hated doing it, but I would do it because I wouldn't trust them to do it the right way. Yeah, okay. And my mom... <laughs> God, I love my mom coming in with the wisdom. She was like, if you don't let someone help you, then you're going to be doing it for the rest of your life. So you either have to love it or you better let it go. And so wise words. I've slowly let those things go. And when I was moving in with Veronica, like my roommate in college, my mom was like, you know, kind of telling me like, don't be crazy. And I, I've slowly been weaned out from that. I still obviously prefer, but you're not dirty or messy, really. We, we're pretty clean people together. So it works out. But I had to slowly let go and I think I end up letting go of those things that I think I have to do because I do it best um, through the sheer, my sheer inability to keep doing it at that level. Does if that you want to succeed in life, you have to surround yourself with people who can do tasks better than yeah, you better. can. Mm -hmm. So if you surround every, yourself with people who do things in a lesser fashion, you're going to end up with a lesser product in yeah. life, I think. I agree. But if you collectively. Cope, and to support people who can do better than you, like to be like, go get it you yeah. know if you search out those people who can do uh, mm -hmm. your your job better i think you're going to either a learn from them or b you know if they're yeah anyways i do concur okay third question yes what small or trivial thing makes you want to hulk smash mm -hmm. oh i have a lot of things that really chap my hide or grind my gears makes me want to hulk smash um random things i hate when people don't use their turn signal and get over I hate when you have your turn signal on and people speed up to not let you in. Um, I hate when people leave messy tops of condiments. I think it's fucking disgusting. If I open something and crusty ketchup or mustard or something fucking falls off, it's fucking disgusting and I hate it. I think that one it has the most hate mm -hmm. and cursives, uh, cursives, curse words <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, in it. So I think I'm going to go with the condiments is the one that angers you the most. Probably, but there's more I've got, I'm sure. What grinds your gears, Katie? What grinds your gears? You gotta think of them too. Currently, and this may just because I'm I'm getting old. What's that uh insurance commercial that I love that we both oh, love? that you turn into your parents? It's um I forget which what company it is. It's great though. It's a but great it commercial. Great. And he's like, I I'm helping people who've when you purchase your first home, you turn into your parents, I think is what he kind of goes with. Yeah. But he has them, he's like he tries to stop them from doing things at the grocery store he's like okay i think you should just make a decision and then he tries to grab this like party tray of a bunch of different chips and he's like it's not a play date it's a super bowl party right oh. he's like i forget what he says he's like gotcha or something who else likes documentaries about submarines i know my dad yes, yes. <laughs> if you have too many if, if there's so many pillows on the couch you can't sit on it you shouldn't have any more pillows and she's like and he like knocks them on the floor she's overwhelmed i don't what? know if we're doing a good job describing the commercial but it's it's great yeah and then he he's buying essentially the same shirt that he's wearing and he's like where have you seen that shirt before and the guy's like oh <laughs> and he goes i'm still gonna get it though and he's I'm, like, i've i've been uh acquiring some mm -hmm. not grumpy old man uh are you vibes. turning into your dad no because he 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 would be guilty of the thing that i i do not like here but oh, okay. uh, people who blow through stop signs we live oh, yeah, it drives me crazy. on a, not a super busy street, but a busy enough street and cars. I, I see it from the window. Texas I'm like, drivers there's are the another one. Worst. There's yeah. another one. They blow through the stop sign all the time. Mm -hmm. And I find that really disrespectful. One, because I live here and mm -hmm. two, because it's dangerous, you know, and there's parks and stuff like, like we you, have a park right here. Kids could. Yeah. You, mm -mm. you just don't, you don't blow mm -mm. through stop signs like that. You can slow down to, you know, a also real, people who don't pick up their dog poo. Yeah. Grinds my gears. Well, so I bought a trail cam. I don't know if I Did told you, you that. Oh, yeah, yeah. You to I, I knew you told me you wanted to. I just didn't know you had. Yeah. I'll be posting some of that, uh, mm. some of my reconnaissance, you know. The footage. Yeah. The evidence. Who left this scat here? This scat. <laughs> Let me dig into it. I'm a scatologist. Um, dirty fingernails. That grosses me out. That's not Hulk smash. 
Hulk smash would be, oh, so I have an irritant. I wouldn't say Hulk smash, but you do one thing that just drives me nuts is where you, and I've talked about this on the podcast before and it's not news to you, is when you pull something out, you don't put it back from where it was. You just put it like in the area. So like in, for instance, we have a spice, we have two little spice drawers. So this is minor grievances you've gone to. We're talking about Hulk, Hulk, Hulk smash. Yeah. But that's always like, ugh, it makes me, ugh. Makes you rage just a little. No, I don't really rage. I don't say anything to you anymore. It's not right. worth it. It doesn't change anything. Yeah, uh, this isn't about airing grievances. This is Hulk smash. Okay, so what else is your Hulk smash? That's about it. I really don't That's have. That's all you've got? I don't have a lot of uh, rage in me anymore. Yeah. I've, I've reached that age in life where the rage has I subsided. I don't think it's true, but okay. <laughs> right below the, the mm -hmm. placid it's surface. It's just hanging out right there. There's the iceberg. You yeah. don't know it's there, but it's there. Um. Yeah, I don't know, David. That's a hard question because I don't actually get that riled up either. I right. feel like even the things I'm describing. <gasps> I think oh. that's the secret to success in life is mm -hmm. if you can encounter situations that would ordinarily make you Hulk smash rage, mm -hmm. that you you have that thought and then you let it go. Like you, It's okay to have the thought, yeah. but once you've had it, you just have to release it. You can't dwell on it to, to the point. I'm not dwelling on something, but I am going to bring it up. Um, the, mm -hmm. but I was proud of myself because I, after it happened, I promised myself, don't go back to the house and tell Katie about it mm. because what's the sense in it? You know, you're just going to bring up an, something that really angered you mm -hmm. and, and, and you're just going to re-injure yourself by thinking Get about it. So, about so it. be upset in the moment. I was and upset let it go. and then I let it go. Let it I was go. like, goodbye. Mm -hmm. Goodbye. <laughs> I said to so myself. What um, and the reason why I think that way is because of the episode with Duncan Trussell and mm -hmm. the Buddhist teacher. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he was talking about like, what do you do when you're... Anyway, so I was backing out of our driveway. Mm -hmm. Or no, I was pulling out of our driveway, not backing out. Mm -hmm. I was pulling forward and uh, I'm, I'm turning mm -hmm. and some person blew through the stop sign and came and just like drove, like kind of cut me off as I was pulling out of my own driveway. So not only did they blow through the stop sign but they then proceeded to cut me off as i was pulling out into the street it was the craziest thing and they swerved and they were doing about 40. now jesus christ i noticed that this was a younger person so i was like well maybe they're just not very good at it maybe they're oblivious maybe they have music maybe they're distracted by their phone and i was like i'm gonna follow this person because they're pulling into the suburbia say never do that exactly but in my mind i was like <laughs> follow them and tell them what a shitty driver they are but i didn't <laughs> I just sat there and I was like, just Chill calm down out, for a man. second, you know, like take a deep breath. No one was hurt. Thankfully, I was alert. Mm -hmm. They were oblivious and I let it go. And then as I was driving, the temperature in the car was rising, but it wasn't. It was you. It was me. And I was like, you know, like you're you, I had steeping an, in your anger. I had an inner monologue going and I was like, mm -hmm. Sean, just let it go. And I was like, but that and, and it turned finally, into bubbles. you know who won? The guy who said, let it go. And I felt amazing. I came back home and I was like, coming back home. I was reminded because I saw the, the scene the of the, area again. the almost crime. And I was like, I'm going to tell Katie. I was like, don't tell Katie. You're just going <laughs> to, you're just going to frustrate yourself. And yep. I was like, but I want to. And then I was like, I bet you, you won't. Mm. And I was like, I, I bet, bet you, you, you will. Little Sean's having arguments. To and as I did other. that, I blew through a stop sign and cut some off. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, my God, it's like the Truman no, Show. You didn't. No, but I, I didn't. I got home and I didn't mention it until now. And honestly, processing that moment mm -hmm. by talking to you now instead of like being heated mm -hmm. i can talk about it without any emotion and it just i let it go but it, it's kind of interesting like this was an exercise just one small exercise in in managing your anger yeah just it is okay what, to be angry though you don't have to like stuff it down i didn't i just let it go i, I felt it and i was like just let it go because mm -hmm. there's other things going on in the world Yep, there's bigger fish to fry. What I was thinking is the Hulk smashing. Our friend Todd Corderaro hates clicking pens and chewing. Remember, he has, he, a, he has misophonia. And so I was thinking those people would have a big problem on a Hulk smash. Oh, one Hulk time smash. we were in a car yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. going from Manhattan to uh, Yale, which is in Connecticut. So Manhattan to Connecticut, maybe a two hour drive. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, to Depends on traffic. Yeah. We're sitting in the back. It was a, a film production. We were going to film, um, he's passed away now, but Cesar Pelli, the architect. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, that was what you were. Yeah, I went to Pelle Clark Pelli, their headquarters, mm -hmm. uh, which he was, 
I think he ran the Yale uh, Department of Architecture as well. Mm -hmm. But he's a very interesting character and we got along great. I had a chance to work with him a couple of times. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the car ride from Manhattan to, so a two hour drive, uh, the fellow in the front seat who is part of our crew, mm -hmm. I won't name any names, but Todd, <laughs> I didn't know. Yeah, we didn't know about the misophonia yet. <laughs> but Buddy in the front seat was chewing gum open mouth and clicking a pen. Click, 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 click. My soul just, it, Todd had to be fucking crawling out I of I looked skin. over and he looked like he was, he, he was just like staring at the window and grimacing. <laughs> and and I, I looked at him, we made eye contact and he, he clenched his drive in more. He was so, I didn't know what was going on. I thought maybe he had had too many cocktails the night before because we had gone out for a dinner and, mm -hmm. you know, you have two cocktails and you, you know, you don't feel good the next day yeah. or whatever. So uh, we get out of the car and he was white knuckling it the whole way. His hands looked like there was no blood in them. And so I think he, he had fight something. or flight. Yeah, he should have said something. You know, I think he was just too polite not to say anything. So he, he was burying that tension. That's got to catch up with you though. It does because all it would have, all you would have had to say was, hey, I, can you stop clicking that pen and, you know, maybe spit your gum out? That stuff, just, I find it very agitating. Misophonia is not a joke. It's not a joke. It's not a joke, Jim. But it has a terrible name. Misophonia. I know. I'm so phony. But yeah, I don't think I have anything else. I mean, if someone tries, this is like, it's kind of a random thing. It's not a little thing that people do. But if someone was to try to harm or put down or hurt you or someone else I love, I could fucking Hulk smash. I, I can rage yeah that's mm. when i can like see red and i'm like not myself um it doesn't happen very often but once it's happened that person's dead to me like i'm like fuck you never mm -mm. try to hurt people that i love <laughs> there are I some rage. um vitamins that uh, i take as well recently uh just experimenting with different vitamins where uh, are you going with ashwagandha this? and l-theanine <laughs> those two mellow you right the heck out now, I wouldn't recommend anyone takes those without looking them up and seeing what they do, but I- Talk you know, to your doctor. Don't yeah. talk to Sean. He doesn't know. Doctor? <laughs> doctor. I play a doctor on a podcast. I'm it's the second good. best doctor, but I don't know anything. <laughs> I know that's why you're the second best. Okay. So I hope you all have a great weekend. Till next time, the right honorable David Redacted, Prime Minister of OTD and Land. P.S. Body Mods will be in the following email. Very cool. Thank you. Thank you. Also, if uh, you're wondering where the census has come from, because- mm -hmm. We shared it in the last podcast, mm -hmm. and um, apparently people were like, wait, I've never heard of this before. Oh, David, David put it together. David has been tracking all of you. He's got all your data. Um, <laughs> that, so. but he's the prime minister, and he's like, if you want to put in your where you're from, tell me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I actually want to do one more email because these are always short. Okay. Ben, he's our minister of space and electricity. Yes, sir. Ham he, operator professional. He always keeps his emails succinct. And this is entitled Family Legends. I know. I had to click on it, had to open it. It says, hey, Katie and Sean, as the minister of space and electricity and a sometimes genealogist, what? Hmm. I had a fun family story that I wanted to share with you and the wonderful audience. My great grandfather lived in Sweden in 1912 and wanted to immigrate to the United States. The family legend for a long time was that he actually was close to the Titanic when it sunk, which was on the ocean at the same time. Wow. What? Like two ships in the night, except one didn't make it, you know? I did some research and found that he went on the Nor SS Norega, which is around 2,000 miles away from the Titanic when it sunk. But it was, in fact, on the waters and likely could have heard its distress call, as the family legend says. Wow. Are there any funny, fun family legends that you or the audience has? Would love to hear more. Thanks for all you do, Ben. I agree. I would love to hear those. Um, I'll have to think on that, Ben, because I don't know if I have any fun family legends at this point. We have a very interesting one on my grandmother's side, mm -hmm. uh, who happens to be an immigrant from northern Sweden. Um, her, I believe her grandfather. Mm -hmm. So they lived on the border with Finland, roughly. Yeah. But my grandmother's family was... Oh, yes, I know this legend. Uh, in, in, yeah, it's definitely a legend. Mm -hmm. I don't know how true it is, but it sounds like there's some truth to it. Mm -hmm. They were part of the royal court, not uh, royalty themselves. But you What know, does that mean? I, I think, think you're that. buddies with the, the royalty. You hang out in their living room. And she you, asked Christina. She's really into the royal family the, stuff. And the jester, you know, uh, performs. Um, there's, you know, musicians. And you get to hang out and have good food with the royal family, but you're not necessarily the royal family. So you're I like suspect. hangers on? Okay. Yeah, kind of like uh, part of uh, their uh, entourage. You know, okay. 
So you're the, the royal entourage? I think Continue. there was something like that. Uh, but there was an attempt on the king of Sweden's life. And I think my family was uh, part of this uh, oh. attempt in oh. some fashion. But I don't think that they were the ones you know, trying to do it. They were kind of maybe they maybe they helped. were the insider. Maybe they left the door open yeah. as the you know the attempted person came in. So uh, they were in trouble and they were banished from Sweden to Finland. So they had to go across the border. Wow! And when they did that, they stayed, I believe, for one and a half generations, and then they returned back to Sweden and they settled in Forlefto. Wow. Skeletia or whatever mm -hmm. you pronounce it as but yeah and so they were they were uh you know they weren't in trouble they didn't go to jail but they were forced to into to exile for a while so maybe they were just thought of as being dangerous swedes you know which, well they're probably just like we can't trust you yeah you know yeah but anyways that was uh so then my grandmother's father i believe was the was a kid at the time when they returned from finland oh, okay and uh then you know, and so they he raised his family he grew up met yeah. her mom yeah, got married, had her. Yeah, Inga. Mm -hmm. Inga Rus was my great grandmother. A anyways, but I mm -hmm. think that, and I, I could have the details wrong, but uh, there was somebody in our family who was doing quite a bit of genealogy. We do have family members mm -hmm. in Sweden still. Um, That's cool. I, yeah, I think my grandmother's niece or cousin's niece or something like that, and she had come over. Mm -hmm. and uh, had brought a bunch of paperwork to like share with the family. Oh, cool. And, mm -hmm. So you get to see. That's what my brother was really into, the genealogy of our family. And he would interview my grandma and papa and mm -hmm. our great grandma and stuff. And he was like trying to put things together. Um, I don't know how much he did or what, you know, what happened. But I find that stuff really cool. Really it's fascinating. amazing. You know who? Um, you can actually hire someone too. People do that for a living. I yeah. hired somebody on behalf of uh, a client in the past. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the Sagerstrom family. I worked in their archives mm -hmm. and we ended up hiring uh, a genealogist to track down information on their family, mm -hmm. which also is Swedish. And it was interesting because I believe there's two major repositories for genealogy information in the world one happens to be i believe in sweden and i'm okay. not sure why that is and i could be wrong about that one but the the big big one is in utah the mormons well they keep all their records well they're, they're so only, organized no do they keep their own records but they got they hoover up any other information they can on, maybe they have on our family records lines. we should ask the mormons if your family has been in the united states for the last couple hundred years they certainly have migrated from because my mom and my dad's family obviously different areas and, and i don't know if you're a mormon and you're listening i'm i'm curious because i don't remember why they do this but i think it just has to do with well, keeping someone track should of humans have, you yeah know? someone and, should have the information uh, yeah keeping family lines in order i don't know but mm -hmm. very, if you know tell us we're interested mm -hmm. but yeah Genealogy. it would be cool i always wanted to get uh there's like artists that work with genealogists that put together those trees mm -hmm. of your family and they find out all the people, you know, yeah. as many generations back as you want them to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They can or do as many great, as they can. great artwork with that mm -hmm. too. Uh, there, there is a problem with people who use ancestry.com and not with the people, but, and I learned this from the genealogist. Uh -huh. She said, you know, a lot of people are, are amateur genealogists, right? Of course. And yeah. it can be confusing once you get back by about a hundred years. Mm -hmm reading the the paperwork because it's older typically it's held by the church you know mm -hmm. birth records mm -hmm. um and and you can make mistakes in in going down the route hole so all of a sudden you, you you say oh i found a relative my my grandfather's brother and you put that on your tree mm -hmm. turns out it was maybe a similar last name oh but it wasn't real it yeah you, so you're blending trees that may you know mm -hmm. like uh oh we claimed you know someone famous like uh, oh, napoleon for instance you know yeah and that's why we're so short and short-tempered <laughs> In like warmongering, yeah, and like yeah. to have these big trucks we get out of what Napoleon complex, like, oh. you know, like oh, that's like why a they little have big man trucks. and you get in a big truck, right? Ha ha ha! He had a big boat. Other people have big trucks now. Right, I was right. Just making a yeah, a little, a little man joke. I bet you Napoleon, because he rode around on a horse, right? When he was in battle, he was yeah, a well, general. That's the joke with Shrek is that that little that little king? Yeah, remember the movie Shrek? I didn't watch it. Oh, it's really funny. I've heard. There's a king, I forget his name. Um, but anyway, he's a teeny tiny little man and he's on this big horse and he like comes off with like a little ladder. Right. Right. You know. But you think if you were a shorter man um, mm -hmm. or woman mm -hmm. that you would get a smaller horse so you're, you're, so you look big. But they want to be taller. I think that's what it is. Bigger. Right, right. That's true. So like, when you're like in the vehicle. in your shoes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like George in his Timberlands. Right, right. Mm -hmm. hmm. So on that note. <laughs> 
pontifications. Mm, but yeah, I, if you have I'm any really cool family legends, send them into otdmpod at gmail.com. Yeah, certainly. We can then start collecting that data and yeah. uh, putting it on the census map. Legend has mm -hmm. it. Legend has it. <laughs> and I'll ask my mom if there are any funny stories too. Yeah. I don't, I don't have any, you know, that I can think of. My mom's uncle, yeah, her dad's brother mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. um, a homeless man who uh, would appear. Oh, I've, and, I've heard this, yeah. Yeah, he would appear out of, you know, like in her childhood, like every so often, and then they'd go get bagels or whatever. Wasn't and, he really wealthy? Well, nobody. He did pass away with some money, but he was a homeless person who I think he, he just he had. Like chose to be homeless? Yeah, think? I believe so. Maybe mental illness? I think that was the case. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he would appear and disappear. And then he disappeared for quite some time. But one time, I think my mom and her sister were watching the news. Mm -hmm. uh, when he was on it? And he was on the news, like wandering around behind the reporter. Oh, and they're, and they're like, like, oh, oh my God, it's Uncle, Uncle Arnold. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that was interesting to hear that story. And then uh, I believe there was rumor that he was like a hockey player at one point in his life like oh, semi-pro you mm -hmm. know and um but then when he passed away uh he had money and, and you're like how did a homeless man have so it's not always about that yeah, yeah. it's interesting um and they didn't know that he had passed away it was after the fact because mm -hmm. the government then tracks down family members and to disperse any any of the an estate yeah they tried to yeah that's crazy um but mental illness back then even in my gen like early in my life like it wasn't treated in the same way it is now or recognized and, and a lot of people who are homeless are mentally ill yeah. and they can get scared they don't want to take especially schizophrenic people can f worry about taking medication because that's the way the government tracks you you know the right. delusions can be really strong um i had a boyfriend in high school whose uncle was severely schizophrenic and really struggled and the family had a hard time trying to manage him and he'd been in treatment for like months and then and he was grown like think of it like it's yeah. he was like in his 40s or maybe even 50s i don't know if he's older or younger than my boyfriend at the time's dad you know what i mean i don't know but either way like an older man mm -hmm. and he he had he was i always say hi i would say hi to him because he moved back in with the parents who were now like retired or whatever mm -hmm. but he was like super hairy like he'd always come out without a shirt on he had this huge beard and he was kind of like look like mountain man kind of but a little bit sc scary because he just come out of like we'd be having dinner and he like wouldn't join us and then he'd come out and he'd you know and they'd be like oh you decided to join us for dinner you know because he was he was having a hard time acclimating but anyway we thought he was doing great and they'd built a little apartment above their garage for him so he had his own entry and he could do his things kind of like the Fonzie kind of but like more of a like a halfway house for him so he could get on his yeah. feet a little bit and they were trying to help him get a job and you know get his medication all squared away anyway they went away for a weekend which they hadn't done for a while because of him being there and they came back and he had boarded up the whole house all the windows he said someone was trying to break in and he had to go back in but that was my first it's interesting that was my first uh experience with schizophrenia with and, someone who has delusions yeah and seeing it um because you wouldn't know he was a little odd acting but you wouldn't know anything was wrong like you know i think people assume like oh it has to look and feel this way god can you imagine the the torment that someone's going through you know to, i know in their head it's so, and like they because no he's really scared is, they're yeah. often super scared that's what pisses me off about media portraying it as like dangerous mm -hmm. because i'm like sure you taught me that walking around santa monica you're mm -hmm. like oh if someone's being erratic in their behavior and they're they're muttering themselves typically they're they're scared of their environment mm -hmm. so make sure you make eye contact don't like shun them yeah because shunning them makes them feel invisible mm -hmm. make eye contact say hi how are you today and they'll sometimes come out of it yeah and they'll they'll put on a show <laughs> like, like no, oh good fine. morning yeah, yeah. <clears throat> they turn the businessman they mm -hmm. once were and fix their fake tie and give it, you a it's salute. interesting yeah. though because they're caught in their own world yeah you know um and yeah, it was so kind of sad to see that happen with him acknowledge the human yeah not the illness yeah um, I, I find that's why i find it fascinating um but yeah so that was like the boarding up and the you know he was very terrified and what i was going to say is that people who are schizophrenic or have other mental illnesses tend to only lash out at people because they're scared so like that's why you don't like approach them and try to touch you know because you don't know what they think they might think you're from the government taking them away you don't know what their belief system is but you know that i am <laughs> but anyway um yeah that was my first the first person i ever saw who was like gravely ill 
and and they I mean they had money and they were doing everything they could to take care of him but i feel fortunate that i have all my faculties i know yeah that, I know do you ever that, just feel grateful that like i do because you you know it could have happened i'm pretty sure because i take my vitamins the vitamin d the vitamin k the vitamin <laughs> a the vitamin b's c's it's d's definitely the mushroom vitamins that that's you take. what that's what keeps my uh mental freshness keeps you keeps you here and now all right well okay. if you stuck around till the end that was a turn <laughs> it took a turn <laughs> yeah wait we wait to the end to leave the good stuff but family legends i'd love to hear them yeah and i'll try to think if i have any i'll even call my mom and see what she's got going you're writing you, you you're the legend you know oh geez, many years from now they're going to tell the story of carly <laughs> <laughs> that's not my name oh, da, da, da. that's what we discovered oh and my, put her on the family tree that's like my my mom's dad had this girlfriend that was terrible and she would always get my name wrong or write it wrong on my cards even my great grandma did that as she got older it'd be like my name would be spelled wrong and the funny thing is she's the one like she she like when my mom was telling her my you know like she was part of the naming process like yeah. she was totally aware and she'd be like you know katie was a y katie ie my sometimes people write in letters to you in, in the comment section you know mm -hmm. and i get i think it's kind of fun mm -hmm. um but misspellings of your name i know <laughs> and last week i had carphy carphy k-a-r-p-h-y <laughs> wow <laughs> like, dear carphy uh, and i wanted oh. to share it with you but then i feel bad i'm like well maybe the person but the the rest of it was written well so they weren't struggling i always think that maybe they have a friend in their life whose name is carfee but but similar and so it, it corrects yeah. because um it was it, like our friends uh abba and jesse have a a boy named neam mm. and forever when i type in neam my phone would correct it to liam because mm. it doesn't know the name neam and then i have to send abba a text and be like sorry neam my phone auto corrects now it knows but sometimes it like tries to fix things for you and makes it worse growing up with an irish first name and a french last name mm -hmm. in the province of quebec which is french speaking mm -hmm. i have some good stories about that we'll get into that on another episode okay. uh but if you have a story about how someone has butchered your name Ooh, yeah uh, i'd love to hear it send those in to yeah. otdmpod at gmail.com great okay have a wonderful weekend we will see you next time Bye. bye